Talk Radio. Let's go. Yo. Welcome to the war room. We got Dev. What up? Kill. Jimmy. PJ. B. Austin. A hot block commander. Give it to you. How you want to end a one or two hour show and keep the brain running with the premise to talk sports on a national level. Both with the topics. Sort of like some rubbers. When it's game time, they like the Fab Five doing prime time. Sports conglomerate to speak their minds a little bit. For sports medicine and sports veterans and greats. The 4 for 26 or the war in Kuwait. It's the war room with five nights at the round table. Five Philly guys diversified and educated. What up, sports fans? You are once again live in the War Room, brought to you by War Room Sports on that WRS Podcast Network. I'm Devin McMillan, and I'm at the roundtable with my brother, Jimmy the Blueprint Williams. NBA Summer League uh, had a huge storyline this week, and among other things, we'll talk about some stories leading up to next week's start of NFL training camps. So make sure you keep it locked right here, and if you want to get in on the live conversation, Join us right now in the JW Philly Realty chat room at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room or join us on Facebook or Twitter at War Room Sports. You can also call us directly in about 30 minutes when we open up the Digital Extreme Tech Hotline. That number as usual is 323-410-0012. But before we get started, we want to make sure that you make the War Room Sports Podcast Network a part of your daily routine. We're not live on the air. Make sure you visit warroomsports.com. Click on the WRS Podcast Network tab. Or listen on the, on the War Room Sports mobile app or on iTunes. You'll find some of the best shows the web has to offer, sports and non-sports. And you can listen to archive episodes of our show, The War Room, The Broad Street Line with Roy and Chris, After Further Review with The Mayor, The Tissue and the Tape Hip Hop Show with Phil and Survive, Sports Trap Radio with Brandon and Anthony, The Mad Scientist Sports Lab with Nick Ficarelli, and a whole lot more. You can also check the listings at fatsradio.com, P-H-A-T-Z, radio.com for syndicated airtimes, of all your favorite WRSP and sports shows, including our show, The War Room, which airs over there a few times a week. So what up, Stokely Jim Michael, man? It's been another hard week in the U.S. to be black. Tragic traffic stops are now on the menu, man. What up with that? Yo, man, it's, it's, it's scary. Um, a lot of people just don't understand. And, you know, I, I just got to say, I, um, to start off with, like, I just don't um, – practice respectability politics like one uh Stephen a smith or kobe bean bryant and people who just say well if you just act better and pull your pants i don't believe in that man like yo the hunt is on and you're the prey it doesn't matter how how well you so-called behave it's crazy out there yeah it's, it's, it's definitely crazy, crazy there, man. and the heartbreaking news of um sandra bland that was I'm, just like come on man like that was just heartbreaking man because you know it reminded me of that uh that martin skit right remember the martin skit when he was talking about like you know as african-american like you, you know oh yeah you don't know about talking about back to police you know what i mean right. like, right. white people are like what you blew me over for you know what i mean like <laughs> exactly. you know but you don't deserve to lose your life and then yeah. you know, with all the conspiracy theories and everything you know about her already being gone and it's just a, it's to the point now where it's no longer like I don't even get angry. I, I'm sad. Yeah, watching that video, man, it was it was chilling because I mean you, you you're watching the video. I mean from start to finish, and the the woman actually pulls over because the cop is driving fast on her bumper. And I've been in that situation before. You don't know. If they're doing that to try to catch up and get a look at your license plate, you don't know if they're trying to get past you. So she calmly moved over. She didn't signal. And like that was the event that triggered, you know, the steps toward the end of her life that like it, it, it gives you perspective on how quickly, especially in the climate that we live in today, because you don't know what year it is, because it seems like, you know, we're going backwards into the Jim Crow times. But just that little maneuver like cost her her life because she tried to move out of the way of a speeding officer. And it's, it's, it's heartbreaking to even think about that, man. It's yeah, man, it definitely is. It definitely is. Like I couldn't even watch the whole video, like, because, yeah. you know, no matter what you say about how she should have did this or she should have did that, nothing, you know, she shouldn't have lost her life. That's the bottom line. Right. I don't care how disrespectful you are. 
I mean, nothing she did was illegal. I mean, he was asking her <laughs> questions. Are you agitated? Of course I am. You just pulled me over for the dumbest reason. You, you, he's he's power tripping, asking her to put out cigarettes in her own car and stuff like that. Like a lot of those questions and requests from the police officer were very unnecessary, and that would do nothing to an already agitated person, but agitate them more. So it's like, yeah. it, come on, <laughs> like. They, like, it yeah. seemed like the police these days, I'm not even these days, the police just have this God complex where we can't talk to them like we would talk to other human beings. Like it's an arrestable offense. You could pull someone out of their car because they, they had a certain tone with you because you know you're dead wrong in the situation. But yeah, but I don't even want to get started on this. People, the response of some people was, was, it was funny to me. Like she should have she should have known to talk better. Like, like come on, man. Like you got to be kidding me. Like. You, yo, you don't you, you don't deserve to lose your life, and it's funny because you know, with, with everything going on, the climate that we have in this country, it's like yo, at least respect. You don't respect me, respect the camera. No, this is going on camera, and you know this is your camera. Um, <laughs> it's it's sad, man. It's, it's at the end of the day, this whole thing is just sad. No one deserves to lose their life over a traffic stop, man. Like, yo, she didn't commit any sort of crime. You know what I mean? Like, a traffic stop, be right. Seriously? Calling the cop an asshole or whatever is not a crime. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's exactly. not a crime. <laughs> this whole thing of you have to like, like yo, why, like, ah, man, listen, I mean, this pisses me off, man. Let, let's just move on, man, because the whole yeah, thing let's... pisses me off. It's, it's just bad, man. We got to pay let's... some bills, man. And it's time to yeah, talk let's... about what happened while you were on the grind, which is what you buy direct TV. If you like a better TV experience then cable has to offer. And this includes the NFL Sunday ticket, and it is almost football season, believe it or not. Go to our website, warroomsports.com. Click on that DirecTV logo and order a better TV experience at a discounted War Room Sports sign-up rate. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to have DirecTV. Yes, sir. The first story I want to talk about is one LeBron Raymond James, who may not win on the court, but he's winning in the boardroom. Uh, he secured a major <laughs> Hollywood deal. Uh, you know, he's allegedly... Um, thinking about doing another Space Jam with LeBron at the helm. What do you think about this? Um, I, well, you know, we go back to the to the famous Jay Z line. <laughs> I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman. Um, so you know, LeBron and his his crack team of um, intelligent young brothers have basically leveraged his fame again in a way that's going to make him a very very rich man. <laughs> whether or not he ever steps foot on a basketball court again, um, I, I think it's good stuff. I mean, because Warner Brothers is one of the, the, the biggest studios out there. Um, the fact that his company, Spring Hill, is partnering to to release content with Warner Brothers, it all of a sudden has the chatter. The chatter box is alive with chatter of LeBron possibly doing a Space Jam 2 um, since he's um, in bed with Warner Brothers now, but you know, like 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 we always do when LeBron and his team does something good on the business tip. You know, you give him his props for it. Like you said, it, he doesn't always win on the court, but he, he's definitely winning off the court. And LeBron is is going to be fast approaching a billion prior to his retirement in the NBA. So kudos to him and Maverick. Here's your question. Because everybody in the press release is always always acknowledge Maverick, so this dude must be a genius. <laughs> yeah, Maverick Maverick is putting in his work, you know what I'm saying? And um, you know, salute to him because he never gets the credit that he deserves. I know when he took over, a lot of people, including us, probably I don't even remember. I have to go back and check. Probably were like, "What the hell is LeBron doing?" But at the end of the day, Little young boy, they're making mm -hmm. it happen. You know, so salute to him for that. My question to you is this: I was talking to someone this week when the story broke. Um, and we were talking about, like, you know, just from a marketing standpoint, that Jordan was just on another level. Um, and you had a lot of great players that came after Jordan, such as a Kobe or a Duncan or an AI. And no one kind of matched him in terms of, the, like, you know, the marketing prowess. I mean, AI, we know why AI didn't. <laughs> but even, and as a matter of fact, we know why Kobe didn't do. <laughs> do you think that LeBron James has, is the biggest athlete since Mike in terms of popularity and endorsements and, and, and you know, bringing in that chain J outside of the court? Is he the oh, no doubt. Like, okay, no doubt. I mean, and, that, and that goes across all sports. So you, you, you know, you agree? Would you agree with that? 
Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And I mean, I think Kobe had a chance up until a certain point, but even in Kobe's, um, you know, even when he did have a chance, I just don't think Kobe had the personality to take it to a level where LeBron James takes it. You know, LeBron, you know, off the court, you know, he he's playful and, and, you know, he just seems like a fun dude, somebody that people want to be around, people want to be in business with. You know, Kobe over the last six, seven years, he's just been that honorary old man in the NBA. And even when you catch him outside, even if he's giggling about something, like he's saying something that's still making you say, damn, like this dude is twisted in the mind. Like only one yeah. thing matters to him. So yeah. I don't think he would give off the kind of vibe to make some of these deals LeBron is making because you know at some point Warner Brothers, even if the Space Jam thing isn't true, they're gonna want LeBron to be in a movie. And this this deal is coming off his cameo in the movie Train Wreck. I haven't seen the movie, but from the previews, you know, it looked like LeBron's few little parts probably were good, funny parts. And I just don't see anybody else, especially this. Yeah, yeah. I I don't see anybody on his level, which would be like a Kobe Bryant, like on a, on a marketing level. Yeah, I don't see Kobe doing stuff like that and being able to be funny and genuine about it. You know, it, the thing about it is like, I, I know that um, I always looked at, uh, say like a Blake Griffin and his personality and how silly he can right. be as being a guy that could do that. But, and he's an amazing player, but the, it's not the same. Like, you know, we're talking about someone who is the best in the world, you know, and exactly. See, but Jim, that's, 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 that's kind of the point. Like Blake, would be great for like to star in movies, but Blake doesn't have, he's not on the LeBron James marketing level. I mean, you can see that from the whole Kia thing. LeBron came in, Blake had been doing Kia for years and was making great commercials. LeBron comes in just because he's LeBron. They give him the biggest car, the flagship car. Blake's still advertising cars. He can't even fit in. LeBron comes in and gets the big car. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and, and Blake has been making us laugh for the last four years, but. Yeah, Blake will be way, in movies, but LeBron is going to be way, producing movies. I just want to say real quick, I was actually at the dealer looking at the, the car that LeBron um, was sitting in. That joint is butter. I, 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 I saw it at the car show. I yeah, saw it at the car show. Like, yeah. I was like, this is Somebody... Kia? Like, damn, yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, um, yeah. Kia and that chick Hyundai, they trying to do something. But people just yeah. don't have trust for those brands yet. But yeah, they have some it's nice cars. It, it's interesting, man. Like, um... To, to, to see that because of course he doesn't have the same level of success in terms of um, you know um, championships or whatever but he's definitely definitely making the moves and I don't see anyone else coming up who can do that like you know nah. Wiggins is an amazing player who can only get better but uh, his personality doesn't seem to be the same either and that to me the one thing about LeBron that like love or hate LeBron I'm not a LeBron stan but I'm also not a LeBron hater because um, both of you guys are sick the people that hate LeBron and the people that like you know are richer riders of LeBron but to me, the most amazing thing about LeBron, forget the numbers, is the fact that he lived up to the hype. Yeah. Like, this is a guy yeah. who's been being followed around since he was like 14 to 15 years old. And whether you you know, think he's one of the greatest of all time or not, he's lived up to the hype. To me, that's the most amazing thing about his career. Um, and I just don't see anyone else coming up, you know, not yet at least, uh, who can take that mantle. But it's interesting to see Space Jam because that was such a big deal for yeah. Michael Jordan at the time. You know what I mean? Like, that's a big thing. Like, you know, yeah, that's he said, I wouldn't even want to do. I wouldn't even want There to was do. only a couple people who could even challenge that Michael Jordan marketing level. And it probably was Kobe, LeBron, and Tiger. You know, Kobe and Tiger have fallen off for yeah. reasons <laughs> other than, yeah, yeah. you know, what they oh, do. Man. But like I said, just looking, when you think about certain deals, they just don't have the the – the personality for it. Tiger couldn't do this either. Cause like I said, you know, they're going to want him to be in some of these projects, even though LeBron did say, I don't want to, I don't want to act. I just want to, you know, produce. He, he said, I don't want to act, but you know, if the right role comes my way, I'm like, listen to him. You're not even an actor. It's starving actors out there auditioning <laughs> for roles. He's like, I can choose roles because I'm LeBron James, whether I can act or not. So if the right role comes my way, I'm like, listen to this dude. <laughs> you know, it's amazing, man. And speaking of people with personalities and marketing and the whole nine, Shaq. Because Shaq was another one of those guys. Problem with Shaq is he's seven foot two, and most people can't relate. So it's hard to like sell sneaks when you're seven foot two. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, why well, they threw Shaq, his joints up at Walmart and uh, <laughs> Shaq pay less. The news this past week, um, 
him and Scottie Pippen waged an Instagram war, which was nothing but hilarious to me. It was based over one of those, um, you know, memes put out about the, you know, all-time great Lakers team and the all-time great Bulls team. And Shaq started off saying they would beat them by 50. Um, so Scotty, you know, started talking his trash, basically saying, yo, um, y'all only won three rings. We got six. The whole thing was funny to me because – it wasn't like Shaq and, and, and Kobe versus Mike and Scotty. It was a bunch of other players, and neither one of them just wanted to acknowledge the rest of the, uh, the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shaq, Shaq was throwing out some zingers at first, the way he was, you know, he just put Scotty on sidekick mode. I thought, I thought Scotty's comeback to the sidekick talk was kind of weak because he, he, showed Shaq, he showed Shaq with the guys he played with, Penny, Kobe, Wade, um, LeBron, but it's like Steve half Nash. of those photos, Shaq wasn't the sidekick. sidekick. Shaq was yeah, he the dude. He, he was like the quote unquote Nash Jordan. When he put too many in there. Yeah, yeah he could have showed him with LeBron. Yeah, Maybe he could have yeah. showed a, a photo from like 2004 with Kobe. <laughs> but anytime before yeah. that, it was it was Shaq and Kobe so, and the Lakers. It wasn't more, Kobe and Shaq. Rings if you'd have, he said, y'all don't want more rings if you worked on your foul shooting as good as you do your jokes. Something, something to that extent, but <laughs> they were going back and forth, man. Like, Shaq, Shaq like, took that way too serious anyway. Like, Shaq just yeah. went for the gusto. Like, you know, but the whole thing is hilarious to me. Like, these memes are hilarious. The, the worst memes now that I see, um, and even their sports related, is when they put, like, four people up and they be like, one has to go. Y'all got to stop with them, yo. Yeah, um, that's the new. That's the newest one, thing, man. Yeah, I saw one yesterday with like Floyd, Ali, like Roy and Mike, and like yeah, one and Mike go. Tyson. Yeah. yeah, so that that. Yo, Shaq to told the dude. Head. Shaq told Scottie Pippen, "I was Batman, you was Robin. I was Puffy, you was Mace." Yo, he maced him. <laughs> I ain't gonna mace Scottie like that, man. Got the Mason better, but yeah, you know. Yo, he I, said, "Anybody need a T-Mobile sidekick? I got a pretty good one." hashtag best sidekick ever so i don't know you guys out there you know if anybody later when you call in tell us what you think about this like who 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 has the upper hand is it scotty because he won six championships with the bulls versus Shaq three with the lakers but i'm counting the heat because it was a lakers versus bulls thing um or does Shaq have the upper hand because scotty was the consummate sidekick but 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 Scotty gets sidekick status because of who he played with, though. Like Scotty wouldn't have taken a back seat to anybody else, probably. You know what I mean? Yeah. Couple, so couple kind of quick comments that we got on the uh, Twitter universe. Um, shout out to uh, Blunted Alien who's listening in. He says um, um, he agreed that LBJ did live up to the hype, and also Durant has a great personality and um, you know has a chance to be good in terms of marketing as well. Yeah, he because um, Durant's in. He he's in every other commercial when you're watching a sporting event these days. Um, he's had his own movie debut that was terrible as well. Um, but at the same time, his reach, especially his financial reach, it's getting greater and greater because you see the kind of money that that companies are shelling out to get the rent to market their products. Start with that Nike deal, which tells you like when it's time for LeBron to re up with Nike. They might just give him like a, a piece of the swoosh, like <laughs> they had to give him like a, the bottom half of the swoosh or something. And it, it, it's they, crazy. You know, though, already gave NBA, Durant so much. NBA player, man, because I, I remember that you know coming up, and you, I remember when Magic got his deal. Now I didn't understand the, the, the you know the significance of it because I was so young, but I was such a like Magic Johnson stand that I can admit that that um you know I remember he got his deal with something like twenty years, twenty million. They were making a big deal out of it. Right, but the fact <laughs> of the matter is, when you go back and look at the economics of the game, they were great around that time. But you know, say right, right in between, say the Magic Bird and Jordan era, they were making money hand over fist, and they weren't paying people anyway. And that includes Mike. Mike didn't get his to the very end. But what's amazing to me is these young guys, like they're recognizing, you know, their power and their leverage. Now, I'm not saying that the product is as good. But from a business standpoint, they're definitely taking advantage and taking these owners to the cleaners to the point now where you have some guys who are making money they don't even deserve. But the fact <laughs> of the matter is, people don't come out to see the owner. So it's sort of like a partnership. As, as, as John Wall, how Reggie Jackson get what I'm getting? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But 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 they're, they're recognizing their power. And what they're recognizing is, hold up, the owners have a partnership with us. It's not like we're, 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 we don't get W-2s. Like, they have a partnership with us, and therefore they have to pay us like business partners. And it's just amazing to see um, in the NBA, man. And it's also 
when you think about it, you th- I start thinking about the NFL and how like their union is not really doing them any justice. Like everybody's getting paid. The NFL has like you know the craziest game and in, 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 you know because you can play one week and be done for your career that week. And but Jim, that's the reason though. Contract wise, they get pooped. That, I, mean, I understand that's the reason. That's the like, reason. Yo, they gotta, they gotta do something to these dudes, man. Because- their gift is their curse. The fact that they are in the craziest league is the most entertaining. But it's the reason they can't get guaranteed contracts because, like you said, you can be done that quick. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So they, they don't have any leverage. Money, man. <laughs> even you look at like off the field, there's literally like maybe five players that you know. Not JJ Watts coming along in terms of getting like marketing deals, but you have Peyton right. Brady. Aaron Rodgers, maybe, um, like yo, the stars. Well, they're they're, they're robots, that. Jim, and I'm not saying that in like no, they're slave type of way. I'm talking about robots, like they actually wear stuff that make them look like robots. So they're on the field with a helmet on that they're not allowed to take off on the field. You know, you get a penalty yeah. for that. Which showed up, you know, I always say like football uniforms are robotic. I remember back in the day, day, like, day, 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 and I didn't even get the, I didn't even get the gravity of what he was saying. He was like, yo. I'm trying to show my face so I can get some marketing deals. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He just, I said, he's just trying to stun on everybody. But he's to show his face so his face can be more recognizable. And I mean, you know, right. it was one of the more recognizable players. He actually said that. Um, yeah. So it's just interesting to see, like, you know, what's going to happen with football uh, long term because these guys, like, if you're a great athlete, why would you even want to play football if you, if you have the ability to play something else? Right, it's yeah, because, sort of like, you know, um, some of these guys are like, like man, I could have went. I could have played baseball. I could have played basketball. You should go ahead and do yeah. that. <laughs> I, I, I was reading an article. Was talking about how boxing, you know, back in forties, fifties, sixties, whatever, was the biggest sport in America. But what happened was at the time, none of the professional leagues were making what boxers made. Boxers were making more money than everybody. But once the professional leagues started catching up financially, people said, "Well, I'm not gonna get punched in the face. I can go shoot a go shoot a hoop. I'm not gonna get punched in the face." You know, uh, and exactly. And, same thing happens. So I just wonder if football is becoming more and more deadly, um, you know, every year. And man, just just some interesting. And, and that's why I keep saying, like, they're losing leverage as we speak. Like, talking about yeah, these head injuries and all that stuff. So it's a crazy situation and, for them. Jack and Scotty, we got to talk about all kinds of nonsense. But um, <laughs> you know, let's talk about some women. Uh, Alex Morgan, the first woman to grace the Do cover that. of a sports, the FIFA series. Uh, you know, shout out to her. Um, you know, no women come a long way. The, I mean, that, definitely a big day for women and women in sports. But at the same time, like that, could y'all throw her a bone? Like she still had to share the cover cover with with Lionel Messi. Like they still couldn't yeah. just give her the cover of her own. But this is actually also the first time women will even be on the game. They weren't even on the game before, but now this year's game is featuring women's national team. So. You know that that that's that's a big reason why she made the cover. But I'm like, you know, Messi, I think has been on the cover like 80 million times, if not every year. So they could have they could have yeah, thrown her a bone, and the game would have still sold to the to the the fanatic soccer heads who buy the game every year. So they they could have tried it. I don't think it would have been like bad for sales or anything, unless it's, people it's mistook it for a, a, a all woman all women's game. It's interesting, right, because you, you have, like, a, you know, you have a lot of um, women, right, who are making strides everywhere in business and music and sports and what have you, and I see a lot of, like, backlash on that. But it's amazing because when you, you start to study history, you realize that, yo, women, <laughs> women had it bad, yo. I was reading something yesterday that said that a woman couldn't sign, legally sign a contract until, like, the end of the 70s. Like they weren't, they they couldn't get a mortgage unless they had a husband that like signed with them. Like they legally couldn't sign a contract. This is the seventies. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when people get excited about like you know women making moves, a lot of times they don't understand like the history of it. Women were definitely in a you know they were oppressed. So shout to uh, you know making those moves. I mean now it's to the point oh. where they're getting treated like us. Shout to Brittany Griner. But um. Hey, yeah, but Jim, you notice though, Alex Morgan is kind of a looker though. They ain't put one of the, the ugly Jones. Oh, on the absolutely. That, I mean, that's all part. That's all. That's all part of it too. And that's another thing. They're not like you made a lot of progress, but at the end of the day, you're not being looked at for you know how great of an athlete you are. I mean, that's just the bottom right. line. I'm not saying it should be that way, but that's just the way it is. It's a and, and that's the same thing. It's popular, with, and she don't even win. 
That's the same thing with the, the the cat on Twitter who was talking about Kevin Durant might be able to reach that LeBron level. Like, he will, but they will have to massage his image a little bit because Kevin Durant probably need, like, some wave pomade or something. And he'll be good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he needs some, some moisturizer or something in his hair or whatever, man. But, yeah. But if, Kev, if Kev try to get in these commercials with, like, all them little bugs crawling around his head, like... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's not gonna be that successful. It's definitely, um, you know, they still it's still about the looks, though, man. Shout out to Danica Patrick, who don't even really compete that, you know, but you know, she still is what she is, man. So, uh, you know, let's move on from that story. Salute to her and salute to all the women. Let's talk about your man, the greatest wide receiver in the history of the game, and I'll even argue he's the greatest football player in the history of the game. I will make that argument. Not um, the greatest free. Very right. What's up with your man? I know he's old or whatever. We know he likes to dance, but there's, there's footage of him dancing shirtless in the club. Like, he's in there uh, trying to, as a young kid, say, turn up with his shirt off, man. And Jerry Rice, an old man. What's up with your man, yo? Yeah, he was in the, um, he was in a, a, a club in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. And they said, you know, he, there's actually video of this. If you go to TMZ's website, like, he, he's like, took off his shirt and gyrating up against some chick. Um, I think the song was uh, Futures F Up Some Commas. And the chick, I'm looking at the, the video now, you know, she was a little scantily clad. So I don't know what kind of club this was, but she was a, you know, scantily clad dancer. And Jerry, I guess he figured since she's comfortable, let me get comfortable. And he got up on her and did his thing. Thing is, like, Jerry, like, he's 52 years old. Like, at some point, <laughs> stuff like that just doesn't seem mature. But at the same time, you're always a man at heart. And he's a divorcee. He's not married. So I guess sometime, like you said, like the youngins say, he Jerry want to turn up too. So he, he probably definitely had a few uh, alcoholic beverages in him to, yeah. to, to make him do you know, this. It's but also a thing. We all got it's older hilarious. Uncles old heads. We also have older uncles and old heads. We know that when they hit a certain age, and it, it, it happens at different times. Sometimes it's 60, it could be 70. Sometimes it's younger than that where – they just don't give a F no more. And, <laughs> you know, they, it's sort of like having a car that goes like three, uh, 200 miles an hour, but you got a governor on and right. you get the governor taken off. They hit a certain age and their governor is removed. And you, they, they don't, they're no longer embarrassed because they realize like, yo, I'm on the other side of life. So I don't know if Jerry has hit that point yet, but he looked kind of saucy in the video. He looked like he was a little saucy. <laughs> Let's just he blame it on sauce, the alcohol. It's, it's sauce money. Let's just blame it on the alcohol. Yeah, he's definitely <laughs> sauce money. <laughs> yeah, man. So that's what happened while you were on the grind, man. We definitely have to give some birthday shout outs this week. So, you know, Dad, who's having a birthday, good brother? Uh, yes, sir. Birthdays, as usual, are brought to you by Digital Extreme Technologies. Do you or your business need a custom website solution? Well, for dynamic, professional, and most of all, affordable custom website solutions, you need Digital Extreme Technologies. No need to break the bank. For an effective online presence, top quality results driven websites at incredibly affordable prices. Financing options are available as well. So you can put something on it if you don't have the whole thing all at one time. Uh, visit digitalextremetech.com or call 267 205 4203. And for discounted rates, be sure to tell them that War Room Sports it's my sent birthday. you. Yay! All right, we got some good people having a birthday today. Uh, we got Brandon Roy turning 31, man. It's a shame when you think about Brandon Roy. It's a shame when you think about the Portland Trailblazers organization as a whole and throughout the years, all the talent they've had. It's usually big man talent, but Brandon Roy, you know, he he's he, he's thrown his hat in the ring as not a bust because of, you know, anything that he couldn't do on the court, but injuries. You know, you had you think back to Sam Bowie, who was chosen number one in the draft that that saw Elijah Ron and Michael Jordan go after him. Um, you had, even before that, you had uh, uh, Bill Walton, who came in and, and helped Portland win a championship, but he just was never the same. So a career that was supposed to be one of the greatest um, of all time for big men ended up not being what it was supposed to be because of injuries. So it's something else that Portland lost out on. You got Greg Olden and now you got Brandon Roy. So this franchise has had the worst luck with injured stars or injured potential stars. 
So it's like it's kind of sad when Brandon Roy comes up because he was coming into his own. Um, Gerald Wallace turns 33 today. Shout out to him. Terry Glenn, uh, former NFL wide receiver. She turns 41 today. Shout out to to Bill Parcells, <laughs> calling the dude <laughs> she on national <laughs> TV. <laughs> former Boston Red Sox great Nomar Garcia Parra turns 42. Oh Shout out to you. <laughs> no ma. <laughs> no ma. Uh, Darvin Ham, the backboard shatterer. No game, but he was a hustle dude, had hops out the gym, and of course, got famous for breaking that backboard. He turns 42. Didn't he get a championship with your Lakers? Let me see. I think, I think Darvin got a ring somewhere. <laughs> he might have. He may. Have. I, I, I think, think, yeah, I definitely think he has more than Charles Barkley. <laughs> I think Darvin got some jewelry. Uh, happy birthday. Shout out to the great Gary Payton, one of the better point guards we've seen come through this league. He turns 47. Eldon Campbell, former power forward from your Lakers. He turns 47 today as well. Jimmy, I remember, I don't remember exactly what season it was, but for a good 30 game stretch in his career, not a three year stretch, not a 10 year stretch, not a three month stretch. Before like a good 30 game stretch, Eldon Campbell was once like the best power forward in the NBA. He was balling for a good 30 games. And then and he went back to being year, Eldon he Campbell. Amazing. He was amazing on NBA Live after that. That was before 2K. So <laughs> Yeah, he got his he got his rating up on, on the he video. He got his rating up that year and then went back to poop the next year, yo. So, <laughs> side note, uh, Casey Mack on Twitter great. says uh Kevin Pritchard lost his job when he told Portland to draft Kevin Durant over Greg Oden. <laughs> Yeah, it, like it's one of those mistakes, though, man. Like, you can't blame him. Oldham was supposed to be that dude, but I don't know. He probably still, you know, if he reached his fullest potential, he wouldn't have been better than Kevin Durant. But who really knew that? Um, Antoine Carr turns 54. Now, that's crazy because I thought Antoine Carr was 54 when he was still playing in the league. So, shout out to him. <laughs> and we'd like to give all of these fellas a nice big war room salute. My on their birthday, birthday. shout out and before we move on to some hot topics everybody you know the drill you can check out our website warroomsports.com while you're there be sure to sign up for the war report that's our newsletter click on the contact us tab to send a message about our company our show or to think about sponsorship and advertising opportunities uh while you're on the site make sure you click the memorabilia tab to buy war room sports merchandise click the blog tab to read our latest articles uh, click the respective icons and tabs to like our Facebook page where we talk sports 24 7 to follow us on Twitter to subscribe to our iTunes podcast to watch our webcast at War Room Sports TV and to listen to the WRS podcast network which is now on TuneIn Radio so if you subscribe to TuneIn or if you just have the app on your mobile device make sure you check out the War Room on TuneIn Radio uh, you can also uh, make sure you download our free War Room Sports mobile app to get everything I just mentioned right there on the go. Uh, join the JW Philly Realty chat room right now during the show at blogtalkradio.com slash the war room. To get into the chat room, sign up for a free profile on Blog Talk Radio. If you don't have one, if you don't want one, you can sign in through your Facebook or Twitter accounts because we know most people have one or both of those. Um, so while you're at it, make sure you click follow so you can get updates and reminders about the show. We'll be taking questions and reading posts from Facebook, Twitter, and the chat room during the show to call in and speak with us. Dial a digital extreme tech hotline. That number, as usual, is 323-410-0012. Press 1 when prompted. If you're already listening from your phone, just make sure you press 1 if you want to talk. And the phone lines will be open in about 10 minutes after we talk with the homie Fred Purdue. He has some news about the Miami Hurricane. So if you're a college football fan or if you're a fan of the U, make sure you keep it locked right here because Fred Purdue will be in the war room after this message. Station identification. Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Jamel Hill, the hers from his and hers on ESPN2. And you are in the war room on the War Room Sports Podcast Network. All right, so Fred Purdue is in the war room with us. You guys, you know, if you're loyal listeners, you you hear him every week during the college football season. Uh, you see him on our uh, YouTube channel uh, doing the NFL show Field Vision with us. And right after Jimmy tells you who Hot Topics are brought to you by, we're going to kick off Hot Topics with Fred Purdue talking about some stuff going on at the U. 
Yes, yes. Hot Topics are brought to you by Audible. Is your schedule too hectic to read as much as you want? Try audiobooks. Kick back and let someone else do the reading for you. All you have to do is visit audibletrial.com slash warroomsports. That's audibletrial.com slash warroomsports. You can actually get a free audiobook to try the service out um, at audibletrial.com slash warroomsports, and they have all kinds of books. Everybody knows I love reading, and I read all kinds of stuff, uh, you know, from the most ratchet book to, you know, the, the, the book that will, you know, spark you intellectually. Right now, I'll give you an example. Right now I'm reading two books. Uh, one is Allegiant, which is the third book in the uh, Divergent, Insurgent-type series. So I like to read the books before the movie, but now that I've seen the second movie, I'm reading the third book, and that's the end of it. Um, and I'm also reading one called Between the World and Me, uh, written by ta Coates, a uh, Howard guy, uh, shot at your, your school dev. Um, Did you? Amazing, That's a lot of people amazing, reading that right now. At least the people yeah, in my newsfeed, maybe because they all go to Howard. Yeah, but it's an Howard. amazing book. Like, dude has a mean pen game. Like, he's, I mean, Tony Morrison, uh, you know, calls him the next James Baldwin. I don't know about that, but he has a, he definitely has a mean <laughs> pen game. Um, <laughs> like, she, she might be taking it a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, like, his book is amazing. Uh, so you can pick that up. But you can get either one of those books for free. Um, just go to audibletrial.com slash Warren Sports, and there's a lot of different sports books. You want to keep it sports related. There's a, a new biography on Jordan, um, so that should be interesting. So, anyway, audibletrial.com slash Warren Sports. We want to thank Audible for their support of Warren Sports, and let's get Fred Purdue on the line to see what's going right. on with college football. All right, we're going to talk to Fred right now about the. <laughs> yeah. Fred, what's going on, man? You're in the war room. Welcome back. What's going on, fellas? Long time no talk. No doubt, no doubt. How are you? <laughs> I'm pretty good, man. Uh, kind of missing some football now. I mean, baseball season. Ugh. Can we get over yeah, it now? This is, this is that time of the summer, man. I'm a baseball fan, but it's not the same as my love for, you know, football and basketball. So this is that part of the summer. Um, you know, I'm moving soon, so I don't even have the baseball package. So I'm it's not even like I'm watching that. So it's just that boring time of the summer when when you got leagues like the NBA and the NFL just trying to make little waves just to stay in the 24 hour news cycle. But it's really nothing exciting going on. So <laughs> so let's yeah, so, so let us know. You, it, 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 there's some exciting stuff going on down in Florida with the U. What's going on? What's 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 with the tell all that I heard about? Who's well, we have, three, <laughs> we have a couple things going on. We have the University of Miami, the first uh, collegiate team to actually have a apparel deal with Nike. They ended that deal after about 20 plus years. They decided to go from Nike to Adidas. Not the best jersey looks. It's okay, but it's not all that great. The promo stuff was it was nice, and all the former players got custom custom cleats and jerseys. And then the jerseys looked nothing like they were promoted to be, or the or the cleats. They had a <laughs> uniform release party at Club Live down on South Beach. That was nice and all. Still wondering how those players got the cover charge on it, but you know, um, you know, it, it's cool when the school lets you in, but don't let don't you Shapiro. know. Shapiro. Shapiro. <laughs> definitely. I mean, if Adidas is playing, paying for it, it's fine. But if we, if you're paying for it yourself, we got to investigate. Um, mm-hmm. But New uniforms, especially after one year, Nike decided to give them new uniforms, and they de- they did a complete overhaul last year with gray smoke uniforms, a smoke helmet, uh, green helmet, orange helmet. I, they did a little way too much. I wasn't a fan of it. Certain schools, you just don't touch the uniforms. Miami is one of them. You don't touch the uniforms, especially the helmet. Um, and we had a tell-all, a 2014 former player, uh, decided to give it, give the goods, spill the beans on the coaching staff, and give a lot of things. That, they confirmed a lot of things that I already knew myself, but that he went into a lot much a, a bigger, uh, more in-depth um, conversation with Barry Jackson, one of the writers at the Miami Herald. Still trying to do a little digging on who the player was, but after having lots of conversations with former players that were on that team, just my good guess. I don't want to throw out any names, Denzel Perryman or Duke Johnson or Anthony Piccolo, <laughs> but, you know, um, <laughs> you all those like three three players, <laughs> those are my three names that I'm just guessing. But when you have a tell-all, and he, he told everything. He said uh, things like Mark D'Onofrio, his, the defensive coordinator, 
um, that is not really he's not really liked by the the players or the or even the um, the fans. Most of the fans really don't like him because they, in their minds he sits back and lets the guys sit in coverage. Uh, according to him, he's not the most receptive coach in the world. A player could say they're running to the left side every single play and they're getting five yards a touch. But when you mention it to him, let's do this instead, he'll snap on you. He's not the most friendly guy, but to the media, he'll say he'll praise his players. Uh, somewhat of a two-faced coach, but he doesn't actually uh, get a really aggressive. I even look back to the Florida State game, and I say the same thing. Uh, they were up 27 to three, and the defense completely just sat back in coverage and let Jameis Winston rip them apart. And he even said, this anonymous player that is, um, that after they lost that game, it was downhill from there, simply because they couldn't be aggressive and they couldn't do it. They couldn't use their athletic talent. They they seemed like they were playing with their hands behind their back. Wow. Wow. So I I wasn't even aware when, you know, I talked to you off air about, you know, coming on and talking about this, that it was an anonymous tell all. So somebody's spilling all the beans, but they're not, as, as Herm Edwards would say, they, they're not putting the name on it. So I, I wonder how long <laughs> yeah, exactly. that privacy is going to last. Cause you know, eventually everybody's going to find out who it is. I mean, you already yeah. have, your sources, and you've narrowed it down to about three players. So we're going to find you. We're going to find you. <laughs> For me, so, I look at it, and, and there are other things. I mean, there, it's a, there's a big article about it. And for me, as I'm reading this article, I'm saying, man, that confirms this, this confirms this. He went as, uh, as far as saying Al Golden doesn't really seem like an approachable head coach. You know, normally you say, well, I think I can go to my head coach as, a mentor, maybe a father figure, something. He treats you like a business asset. He'll praise you to the to the media and the public. But when it comes down to it, uh, even players like uh, Taylor Gavois, uh, a starting left tackle who was going to essentially be a shoe in for the position, he was kicked off the team with no reason, uh, simply because he put off a, a Twitter uh, a tweet and said, "I'm going to be the starter," and it's pretty much his job anyway. But Al Golden doesn't seem like the most um, forgiving guy in the world. I'm, I guess maybe you suspend the kid, you chastise him, something. Uh, you just completely kick him off the team, take his scholarship. Essentially, the guy basically cried in Al Golden. Wow. So, speaking of Al Golden, though, like we know that his that his seat has been heating up as of late. How hot is that hot seat for Al Golden? Well, uh, it could be Miami Heat hot, and if we want to go with, with team references, um, it's very hot. Quite honestly, I think I think he should have been fired maybe a year ago. Uh, it's time to go ahead and give it up. Uh, and I know you guys, you guys being from where you are, you have a little idea of where Temple used to be football wise. He's got them to a nine and four record, and that's nice and all. But when your 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 recruiting base is South Florida, and a third of your team is from either California or the Northeast. That's a problem when you have a hotbed with guys like Sammy Watkins who passed up, Sony Michelle who's at Georgia, Torrance Gibson who went to uh, Tennessee, and many other players who have been who are either high-level freshmen or big play guys that decided to go elsewhere. He lost out on four. But- now sure. wait a minute, friend. let me let me ask you your opinion on something. And I think I know what your opinion is because we've spoken about uh, Golden before on this show and your shows everywhere. Um, do you think that you know the fact that he's missing out on on that recruiting base? Do you think that has anything to do with the former regime turning a lot of people off from Miami, or do you think it's him? Like he came in and people who might have gone there says, "Well, I don't know this guy, so I'm not going there." Because I, I'm thinking it could be a little bit of both. Like we could be giving him all of the flack for what the people before him did. Like Miami wasn't Miami when he got there. So I'm thinking that, you know, some of the people could still be turned off from from the, the, the more recent regimes. But he's not a big enough name to recapture that that base like he probably should but but what's your, what is your what is your thought is you think there's any truth to that or you just think it's all him he's just bad at recruiting it's completely him simply for the fact that <laughs> it, don't it, mess with it, that dude. 
<laughs> simply for the fact I, I would go with you on that idea, except the president is gone. They've gone through two ADs since he's been there. They're working on, they, they've gotten rid of multiple coaches, multiple players, uh, different inside sources, even where he's gotten rid of players for reasons uh, that are completely, that have nothing to do with actual football or even disciplinary issues. Just simply, you don't fit what we do. I recruited you, but, yeah, you're on a one-year contract anyway, not a four-year deal. Anyone that knows scholarships knows that. And even to the point where former two live crew uh, member, (laughs) Luther Campbell, by the way, he's a high school football coach nowadays, um, you know, they, yeah, exactly. Don't go. I'm not going there. But um, he even said, uh, and, and I quote, uh, "That's a bunch of BS that Al Golden is not a a viable candidate because he's simply not the guy to bring Miami back. You can't use the the cloud over Miami for uh, NCAA reasons as an issue anymore. You don't have that anymore. You're still." And you're the school to be in the state of Florida. Florida State was down, as well as Florida. Florida has not won more than 10 games since Urban Meyer's been gone. So you have no excuse, and yet these teams are succeeding even uh, with lesser players. I mean, Florida State's taking all of the South Florida players. And and I can can point to two guys, Dalvin Cook and Devontae Phillips. Dalvin Cook, the leading rusher at Florida State, who decided to – he decided to punch a young lady in the face and – um, that's usually a problem. Uh, Jimbo can't control his players, but that's something that I'll talk about another day. But Devontae Phillips, another six foot three, four three, forty kind of guy who usually goes to Miami, that went to Miami Central High School, a mainstay uh, in recruiting. He decided to pass on the youth. Four top five running backs in the state of Florida decide to pass on Miami when there were only three running backs on scholarship. This is a lot. This has a lot more to do with Al Golden and his personality and how he treats the coaches in the state and how he shows a lot of favoritism to other areas and how he runs his his regime more than it does uh, the school because the school in general they were in bed with the enemy and that was Nevin Shapiro. But at the same time, kids are understanding you can go other places and win now than sit back and wait on a three year plan that keeps restarting every year. Ooh. All right, blame it all on Golden. <laughs> but 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 whatever you do, stop discounting what he did at Temple. Do you know how hard it is to make Temple <laughs> a, a winning team, even if it's one year? But uh, Fred, let everybody before you leave, let everybody know about you know your new podcast and where they can find you. Well, we have a new podcast. It's called the Ion Sports Podcast with my boy Rick Brown, former Tampa Bay Bucks beat writer, bringing a lot of inside. To these NFL teams, he's now with today's pigskin.com. So go check out him on, on Twitter at Rick Brown91. You can check me out on Twitter at F Produce Sports. But this podcast, we touched on a lot of things. We actually just touched on the Caitlyn Jenner Espy's uh, fiasco. We, we touched on a lot of things NBA, NFL, uh, soccer, baseball, golf a little bit. Um, we might touch on a little Olympics when it comes around. Who knows? Uh, but right now, we're actually going to be. Uh, Talking a little NFL going forward, next show topic is going to be top NFL QB wide receiver combos going forward nice. in NFL division nice. winners way too early. So make sure you check that out, and you can check us out on Twitter all the time talking NFL and, and college football. All right, and you can also catch him on Field Vision, which will be uh, on War Room Sports TV uh, Season 3. We'll be starting pretty soon because the NFL season is right around the corner. Um, and Fred, you know, the, the guys at War Room Sports were happy to be a part of uh, you guys uh, NFL preview. So I can't wait for that stuff to air. Um, we'll be we'll be listening and hopefully everybody out there when you're on uh, the tube with us, they'll be watching. So thanks again. And, you know, we'll have you on every week once the football season starts NFL and college. So. We'll be talking to you, man. Appreciate it. Can't wait, guys. Can't wait. All right. In his in his Bart voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Fred Purdue, everybody. <laughs> Eye on Sports Podcast. Make sure you check that out. Um, Jim, <laughs> before yeah, we move on, 
Well, let, let's yeah. Bef before we move on to some NFL, because we have a, a few NFL topics that we wanted to get into, but there was a a, um, a fight announced. Uh, Floyd Mayweather basically is going to fight uh, Andre Berto on September twelfth. What do you think about that? I mean, because we spoke about this a few weeks ago because of that whole thing that they went through um, on TMZ with Berto making the video yeah. saying that Floyd was stalking him and all that. And what did we end up saying? Bad scripted. <laughs> exactly. We're, but the thing is, we said that in the war room while everybody was still thinking that that was genuine. We was like, yeah, they might be trying to build something up for a fight, you know, in the future. So Floyd at 48 no. Still claiming this is the last fight that he has with his Showtime contract, I believe. Um, but he's still advertising it as his last fight. A lot of people think he'll go for two more fights to make it 50 and 0. But there's a theory surrounding this fight and the, the opponent that he picked because we know boxing, anything can happen. And Berto is not a slouch, but he's not anyone like his name didn't come up in the opponents that people wanted for Floyd in his either last or one of his last two fights. So there's a theory going around. I read a couple of articles, one on Business Insider, where they highlighted this theory that Floyd wanted his last fight to be an easy one so he can keep that donut behind you know, his record. So he'd be 49-0, and 0, and then a lot of people think he'll take two easy fights to retire at 50-0. and 0. Do you think it's any stock in that, or do you think there's other reasons why he picked the opponent that he picked. Um, I think it is stocking that. Um, not that Berto's a slouch again, because he's not. But I right. do think that Floyd is looking. And also, I heard they're talking about putting this on CBS, so it's a free one. And it's sort of like no matter who he fought at this point, the fight, the big buildup of Fight 48 was so crazy that yeah. it doesn't matter who he would have picked. It would have had the left. same feeling. You know what I mean? It would have been the same feeling. So, um, I kind of see this as a business move, and it's amazing because when Floyd, Floyd is just as much in the business uh, news as he is the sports news. Like when I read most Floyd articles now, they're from the Wall Street Journal or Business Insider. It's not even business on the sports right. But um, I think it is something to that because once you go forty nine and zero, and now you're a free agent essentially, who's going to pay me for that fiftieth fight? And the one thing right. about so, so 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 you're saying there's no way he's going to retire at forty nine and zero. And my speculation <laughs> is no, be because there's going to be so much chicken on the table to get that 50th fight. And you have so many players now who are willing to broadcast sports. It's not just about CBS, HBO, Showtime. I mean, you got people like Apple or Google who would pay to have something like that where you can stream strictly from one of their devices. You know what I mean? And right. the buildup would be crazy. So I, I can see him just trying to, like, make that 50th fight so big that he can walk away 50 and 0 with a, a shed load of money. Um, so, <laughs> um, I know, think I, Jim, I think 50, I think he could just take this Berto fight and then 50, he could build up a rematch with Pacquiao, scam everybody out their money again, mm -hmm. and, and, and go out with, 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 with another nice check. Because at this yeah. point, there's nothing left to prove. So just fight the dude again that you know is going to bring the most money to the table. Absolutely. Build it up. You know, maybe, you know, by taking another fight before that, maybe you're giving Pacquiao a chance to go out and beat somebody so he can get his name back up to even, you know, be in the Floyd mix is, to make money on that fight. Floyd has been like the constant professional in terms of preparation and what have you. So I don't see him taking Berto lightly, but we all, you know, we know we nah. watch uh, CBS Big Brother that uh, pawns go home. So, <laughs> Don't try to have this set up for 50th and then Berto comes in and, like, you know, shocks the world because it could happen. Yeah. Stranger things yeah. have happened. Um, yeah, no but, doubt. you know, we've never known Floyd to, like, you know, take fights off. You know what I mean? It's not like a Mike Tyson overlooking Buster Douglas. I don't see that happening here. But uh, yeah. I think Mike it's all, it's all just set took up for all kinds of drugs before he fought Buster Douglas. <laughs> he really he took him. Really. Like, you know, he was on, like, a sedative did. before he came to the ring. I, 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 I read Mike's book, and in Mike's book, Mike said that he literally didn't train at all for that fight. Like, at all. <laughs> like, no training. Like, because he didn't want Yo, to do it but anyway. He, sometimes when I go back and watch that, Johnny, look how I think Mike had a, popped a Quaalude before the fight or something. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, maybe Cosby's behind it. But, um, no, <laughs> I wasn't you know, going to say I, it. I was I just think think it's, all set up. it's all set up for 50. That's just the way I look at it. You know, I'm cynical. 
I'm a conspiracy theorist, but I think it's all about number 50, man. Um, I'm hoping to see a good fight. I'm actually glad that it's coming on CBS because I think that's a smart move. Um, ain't nobody paying no money to see that. After what happened and, and the people, the way they were pissed, yeah. you know, of course you're not going to make a couple hundred million, but you could make a quick 30 million and go on CBS, and they're going to charge marketers a goo gobs of money for that fight. So right, you know, so they're still going to get their 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 ones. They're going to get their ends from that. Um, yeah, they said the the whole thing, the fact that they might put it on CBS might be kind of a goodwill move since they charged everybody a hundred dollars for that pay per view and it really didn't live up to the hype. So yeah, CBS, <laughs> so, but it it can be seen as a goodwill move. But like you just pointed out, Floyd. And the marketers are still gonna get their checks, so it's not that much of a goodwill move. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 um it's one of them things, man. Where you know, CBS is own um, CBS owns Showtime. It's all the same thing. They're owned by Viacom anyway, and you know every company in the world is owned by the Bilderberg Group. But that's a whole other story. So uh, we'll see what happens, <laughs> oh, yeah. man. Um, all right, we got I'm some. Still gonna, I'm still gonna watch the fight as a you, as is everyone else who's gonna be talking. Oh yeah, about it. I'm gonna watch. <laughs> See that? That's the thing. I was never in that camp with the whole Pacquiao Mayweather thing. People, man, by the time that fight, nobody want to see that fight anymore. I was the whole time like, well, I'm watching. I'm not gonna pay for it, but I'm watching. But people weren't even just talking about paying for it. People were like, I'm not even interested in that fight. But then you go see the pay per view numbers and realize. That everybody was lying, like we told them they were prior to the fight. Yeah, the the greatest thing that HBO <laughs> did and, and Showtime followed suit with that twenty four seven, and they didn't really do yeah. one for this fight, but they did. It was I, I watched it literally on their YouTube channel. But the build up, the boxing matches are crazy because you can have that <laughs> attitude, even if you mean it. You watch a couple of them, and it's like, yo, I gotta see this fight. I really, yo, but I've literally it's... said that about fights before. I'm not watching. I still end up watching the twenty four seven, and the last one come on before <laughs> the fight start. And next thing I know, I'm shelling out dough. Yeah, and it's not with 24-7, man. I mean, because like you said, Showtime has, has basically copied the formula as well. But 24-7 was the pioneers. It's not even just boxing. Like 24-7 does a joint before the hockey, the Winter Classic. And I damn sure don't watch the Winter Classic games, but they had some great 24-7s leading up to those games that at least make you tune in for a couple of minutes if you weren't even interested, like, but then you you know you realize what you're watching and it's nothing has nothing to do with what you saw <laughs> on 24 <24/7. laughs> seven. But but shout out to them they are they are nice with. It. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit of NFL stuff because some you know some developments in the Tom Brady situation not really but they're trying to make some developments. But before we do that, I see we got the homie Rob on the line, Mountain Cali. So we're gonna get to him. Rob, what's going on, bro? You in the war room? What's up, man? How you doing? First of all, R.I.P. to Sandra Bland. You know what I'm saying? No justice, no peace. No doubt. No doubt. That's that's some BS, man. That situation it, it irks my soul, man. <laughs> yeah, What's man. going on out there? I know it's a sunny day. Sunny day. Um, unfortunately, in a couple of days, the freaking cowboy camp is going to open up. <laughs> My, you should my go out dad, there and shoot fireworks off into the field or something. <laughs> fireworks, shoot, man. I'm I'm thinking because my dad's a bandwagoner, you know, bandwagon <laughs> old school meaning old school meaning he doesn't really want. He rides. He's a New Yorker, so he rides the New York teams when they win it. I was about to say. So I thought you told team. me he was a Giants fan or something. He, yeah, he's from New York, but it's like it's a, you know those old guys where they they're a fan of the sport, they're not really a fan of the team. Like he just he's, right. he just never want to be tied to a team, but you know he's right. he's crazy. You know he's old. You know he can tell me people from the Red Sox and Yankees from like nineteen freaking seventy two. You know, but anyways, like yeah. anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about going. I'm thinking about going to that camp, man. With my Eagles gear, just to watch. You 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 trying to get you trying to have some violence <laughs> against you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, when you said you were gonna go, I was like, yeah, go. I mean, it's football camp. It's near you. Go see what they what they about, what they looking like. But then you said you're gonna wear your Eagles gear. I'm not going to co-sign that part. <laughs> I don't want to hear that you, you know, you got lumped up by like twenty thousand Cowboys fans. Because you know what? I was just having this conversation with somebody the other day. It seems like because you know I travel a, 
all throughout the country. Um, and I travel to a lot of road Eagles games. And it seems like because of reputation that Eagles fans have, it seems like everywhere you go and the Eagles are coming to town, the fans in that particular city, they all act a little tougher. Everybody's more on edge because they want to prove to you that with your reputation, you know, preceding you, that they're just as tough as you. And and I see it everywhere. So everywhere I go, I see Eagles fans up in the parking lot because everybody else has things to prove. So don't go out there and get beat up <laughs> because they just assume if once they see that green jersey, they assume that you're like some obnoxious rude philadelphian even though you're not but they don't know that that's just what they assume and they have to show you that they're tougher than you i've been there plenty of times we've gotten threatened called out to the parking lot for doing nothing more than rooting for the team because i'm not stupid enough to go into a stadium with seventy thousand people and talk crazy you know about the other team and their fans but you don't even have to do that all you gotta do is wear that green and it sets people off be careful out there, Rob. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. I mean, I heard. I mean, I think that. Hey, Rob, we can't hear you. Jimmy, can you hear him? No, it's telling like he's running from the police. <laughs> can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah, I think clips are like the. Just, just, hey, just, Rob, um, we can't hear you, dog. Yeah, Try to, uh, call back in or something, bro. We can't hear you, good brother. Yeah, yeah so we'll get back with you, man. Be safe out there. Thanks for the call. Cops are chasing you. Yeah, I didn't know. I don't know what that was about. I don't know. <laughs> he he was on. Maybe he was already at Cowboys camp. He was at the preliminary yeah. camp with some fans ah. waiting. Yeah. So what, what um, football stories were you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, earlier in the week, um, the, you know, they, the, the Goodell was talking about how there was no timetable and ruling about Tom Brady's punishment. So. The NFLPA took it upon themselves to try to negotiate a settlement with the NFL. They're basically saying Brady would be cool with a large fine, but he doesn't want to miss any games. But it's funny how they had the gall to say he doesn't want to miss any games. Like, nobody wants to miss any games. And we know Tom Brady is rich enough to just pay the fine and make it go away if it were that easy. Um Originally, they were saying that their request or their proposal was met with silence because the NFL basically said nothing about it. As this goes on, like as it gets closer and you see the NFL, NFL PA making these kind of proposals, um, in my in my eyes, like this was kind of a, you know, they tried to big boy the league because we all know Tom Brady is rich enough to just throw money at a problem. Do you think a request like that might infuriate the league and and have them uphold the punishment, even if they may have been thinking about reducing it or eliminating it altogether. Like if there was any progress in Tom Brady's favor, do you think this proposal may have done something to mess it up? Or do you think he's the golden boy and he's going to get off anyway? It's the, here's the thing, like from what I've been reading, there are a lot of owners who are like putting pressure on the commissioner to stay pat with the four games. Like, they think that if anything would change, you know, the perception of him being the golden boy and, you know, getting what he wants is going to do damage to the league, um, which right. is crazy. I mean, because, you know, everybody will say, I told you, but it won't really do no damage to the league. We're going to watch anyway. But there's a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, these yeah. Owners. NFL there's fans say that kind of stuff all the time, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of pressure from these owners for him to, say, like, you know, lead the four games and let the court decide because the court's involved, so let the court decide. So... Um, you know, but we know that Goddell, like, does what he wants to do. You know what I mean? They brought him in, they gave him that power, and that's what he does. Um, so it's interesting, man. Like, at this point, like, yo, this stuff is so stupid to me. I, I really believe, here's a conspiracy theory, this is all BS <laughs> just to keep the NFL in the headlines. Like, <laughs> like they knew what they were going to do weeks ago, probably. Yeah, like Tampa with the football leads to all this. I mean, it's constant news. It's constantly in the news and keeping the NFL, everyone talking about the NFL, but it's really about nothing. This thing, this whole thing just bothers me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Got to stay in the news. Everybody's, which is which is real crazy how people, like leagues are competing with other leagues to be in the news even when their seasons aren't going on. It's like, let let baseball shine if that's possible. You know what I mean? Stop trying to take 
their shine. Like instead of everybody talking about the All Star break last week, people still talking about you know what's going on in the NFL. And the NFL hasn't. There's nothing really going on. All they've told you is, well, we're going to rule on the Tom Brady thing for another month or so. Okay, so that's news. But but it, but it's crazy. I, I think they're in a, a very precarious position because, like you said, he is the golden boy. Um, if you reduce or eliminate his suspension, you're going to have that same talk. But to your credit, again, like that talk never really means anything. So should the NFL really sweat that? Or should they just do what they do and always let the Patriots off a little bit easy? Um, and and uh, on the other hand, I keep hearing, Jim, the comparisons between, you know, the four-game suspension for cats getting arrested for domestic violence and, and four-game suspension for a dude letting the air out of the ball. And people are trying to, you know, compare that apples and oranges situation and say that the the fines and the I'm sorry the suspensions shouldn't be the same for those type of uh, infractions and I, and I don't know if I really agree with that because like I said it is apples and oranges and one is basically player conduct outside of the sport and the other one is actually a shot at the integrity of the sport. So I don't think, you know, they're saying, okay, we're going to give both of these four games. I don't think there's any comparison whatsoever whatsoever between what Tom Brady is accused of and what, you know, other guys who've gotten four game suspensions for things outside of football were accused of. I think it's just the suspension that they came up with. Yeah, it's difficult to do that. You know what I mean? Like, it's difficult to say, he got this, so they should get this. Like, you have to take everything on a case-by-case basis. Um, but it's still much to do about nothing. Uh, we know that other quarterbacks were doing this. And, again, I'm not trying to hit, to hit you with the, if everybody doing it, then you should get no, because he got caught. So it is what it is. But, you know, deflating the football had nothing to do with them not giving the ball to Marshawn Lynch. At the end of the day, man, <laughs> this is a conspiracy with the NFL just to keep everyone talking football when there's no football. That's what this all is. Well, there will be football in a little while. Everybody out there who's fiending, just just hold on. It's coming. Um, some more news to keep the NFL <laughs> in the news cycle. Did you hear about the, the Harvard student? He has an analytics model where his little mathematical model predict that the Dolphins, the Seahawks, would eventually be the two teams standing in the end. This guy's name is Kurt Bullard of the Harvard Sports Analysis Collective. And he's basically saying the Dolphins are going to win the AFC East, said the Patriots' reign is over. That's kind of easy to say when Tom Brady is supposedly going to miss four games. It's easy to say that the Patriots won't win the division. But he claims that it has nothing to do with that. He claims that it's – just the the odds. He's saying that the Dolphins have a 77% chance to make the playoffs and New England has a 62% chance to make the playoffs. And and what I read, Jimmy, the 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 way they came up with these numbers, it was kind of suspect in my opinion. I heard something like they took the top seven players off each team's offense and the top nine players off the defense and somehow plug that into some kind of formula to tell you who was going to be um, the better teams this season. Do you believe in any of this? Like, do you think this dude even watches football? (laughs) Here's the thing. (laughs) He's a fan. I'm I'm a huge believer in statistics and data um, and data telling telling a story. Um, But there's like, you know, certain things you just can't account for no matter what data you're dealing with. And everyone knows that I'm a, I'm a real estate guy, and part of what I do is, like, I look at data all the time in terms of trends or what have you, and right. it's hard to predict that. And you're talking about, you know, um, an animate object that, you know, it's just a, a overall market. But when you talk about so many moving pieces and so many things, uh, you know, with the ability to happen, how can you do that? You just can't do that. Let's say right. Russell Wilson goes out and breaks his leg. What does that do to everything you've put together? And right. You know, and I know you can give a caveat with all things being well, everything standing the same. That's not going to happen in the NFL. 
There's not an NFL season that we've ever had where there hasn't been major injuries. It just happens every year. So you really can't do that. There's certain things that data can't tell a story all the time. You know what I mean? Like, well, let's put it this way. It can't tell an accurate story all the time. So, you know. But, and he's also using subjective data. He's exactly. saying the top seven players on offense and top nine players, like, you know, it's your opinion that they're better than the top seven on, on this other team, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so that's but what I'm saying, like, I, I do have uh, a little caveat that might endear you, you in particular, to this dude, Kevin Bullard, whatever his name is. Um, the last place team in his data is – the Oakland Raiders, and he said they have a one percent shot at making the playoffs. So I figure, once I told you that, this, like now, this might I'm be. I'm not going to totally throw out his data. There's something to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I can't dismiss it completely. Do I think it's going to happen? No, but there's something to it. Um, no, but at the end of the day, man, like you know, as much as we like to get into analytics, um, it, it lends itself to certain things. I think analytics analytics works better in basketball, probably than any other sport. Um, and we try to apply it across the board to all sports, and you know it'll have a it'll have its use, but it just works better in some sports than others. Like in football, there's just too much going on, which is why football is a consummate team game, and and it's also why it's a beautiful game. Because but there's so many variables in a football game that you just have less in other sports. So no, I don't I don't buy this. Besides the fact that he's talking about the Dolphins, who stink. <laughs> all right, so so. Before we get, because you know we we we're hip hop lovers, so we got some some stuff we want to talk about in the world of hip hop. But before we get off of the NFL, since training camps do open up next week, um, and it's too early to tell anything, we don't know half of the people who are even going to make teams. But and we did this at the end of the season. But Jim, do you have anything in mind? Maybe one or two storylines that you're looking forward to for this upcoming NFL season, you know, maybe the storylines that you're going to follow from the open of training camp to the very end of the season. You have anything that's interesting um, you in that way? And I, and I thought about this, right? I, I've, I've put a lot of thought into this and I really couldn't pick out anything, but I'm going to tell you what does interest me. Um, everyone turning on Jay Cutler and finally saying what I've been saying since he started playing football. And it's like, everyone's turned on this guy. He was so pissed at the rankings. Um, which were hilarious to me. Uh, his ex-teammates are throwing him under the bus. Everybody's against Jay Cutler. Um, so I want to see how he responds. Like, you know, I'm, I've always been anti-Jay Cutler, never liked the guy. But if you're going to respond, this is the time to respond because he even said it himself that, you know, pe- people are just, you know, basically everyone's jumping on the bandwagon, which is the, the hate Jay Cutler bandwagon. Um, yeah. but he makes a lot of money for someone to be like the 20th ranked court. Yo, they got him tied with some dudes like, yo, like Carr from the Oakland Raiders. They're saying that Carr is at the same level as Jay Cutler. That's disrespectful. Damn. So I'm Damn. looking for that. Like, I, like they, like they, they broke down. Now this, is, now this is the coaches, by the way, the coaches, the coaches, uh, broke down, you know, everything to give their, you know, the best quarterbacks or whatever. And the funniest thing was Cutler at 20 and Cutler was pissed about it. And the other one was RG3 at 31, and he was pissed about it. So wow. those things those things to me are the biggest stories. Like, you know, quarterbacks are always the guys that everyone looks to, but I want to see how these guys who've pretty much been disrespected by, uh, you know, um, the coaches around the league, how they respond to that. So that's an interesting story to me. I know it's like not much to do about my team or, or yeah. you know, anything like that. But there's so many stories coming along, you know, with football uh, uh, fastly approaching, like the DeMarco Murray leaving yards on the table. That was interesting, too. But the whole quarterback thing to me is funny because guys – and this is the part of, the, you know, 2015. Everyone has social media so they can respond to things. RG3, like, went hammer when he found out he was ranked 31st and kept putting up all these, you know, biblical quotes. How he going to show this? Tupac lyrics. Yeah, he stayed doing on that. He's, he's so sensitive, yeah. He's so sensitive. Just leave it alone and go and show and prove. And it's funny that you said that because, you know, I have a lot of storylines that I that I want to follow. But I'm going to for for now, I'm going to stick with my Homer storylines. And for, the you know, people out there, they don't know hometown is Philadelphia, but home now is the Washington, D.C. area. So, you know, I, I'm I'm an Eagles fan. I, I follow Washington's professional football team as well. 
um, being this close to him. So RG3 and and what I think is a make or break season for him is one of the bigger storylines that I want to follow. And the, the thing that you just mentioned is it's like already strike one on him. Like it shows that you're reading these clippings, you're paying attention to him. And even if you are, because you are human, you don't have to go out and comment on him. And he's going to say, I didn't comment, but we all know what you do when you get into your sensitive moods. Just leave it alone. Just go out there, work hard, show and prove and be the player that they think you can be, be the player that you think be. So I'm really interested to see what's going to happen with that. But I'm, I have a feeling if people keep talking about him in a negative way, it's going to have a negative effect on him. And it's just, you know, you just can't let that stuff weigh on you. And then, of course, with all the changes that were made in my hometown of Philadelphia, Chip Kelly took a team that was, you know, semi-successful and just overhauled it. Um, the biggest thing for me is I want to see if Sam Bradford can stay healthy and what a healthy Sam Bradford can bring, not only to the Philadelphia Eagles, but to the NFL. Because we've been hearing for five years, if Sam Bradford was healthy, if Sam Bradford was this, like I'm waiting to see, you know, what this guy can be. He was the last of the $50 million guaranteed quarterbacks. I want to see him earn the last 13 or so that the Eagles decided to pay him in a trade. Don't understand that. But um, I want to see if he can earn his money this year or if we're going to see Sanchez running the offense with some gimmick plays thrown in here and there for, for Tim Tebow. So we'll see. RG3 and Sam Bradford and the Eagles are what I'm looking forward to most as training camps see, what, open. What was talking about these quarterbacks, like, you know. <laughs> That's that's my quarterback. So everybody, <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> shout out to Jeff's fourteen forty one in our chat room who always brings a little comedy. He says that's disrespectful to Car. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, <laughs> yo, yo, Cutler makes yo. a Cutler makes a boatload of money. Yo, that's what's hilarious about it, man. I, <laughs> you know, as a Broncos fan, and Dev can attest to this. I was pissed when you know we got him. I never wanted. Yeah, to Jimmy him. never believed. <laughs> Yeah, cause I, I even tried to talk him up a few times, and he just yeah, embarrasses always, me every time I do. Yo, he always reminded me of Brett Favre. I've never been a big Brett Favre fan, so like I just never liked the guy. But you know, now, you know, if you're going to show and prove, now's the time to do it. Like everyone's disrespecting you, man. Um, you know what it's what it's great right to be, Jim? It's not great to be Brett Favre without the success. Like Brett Favre can get away with some of the stuff that he does oh, yeah. because of the success. Wanna, yeah, yeah. Win yeah, one, yeah, that 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 buys you another two years. Yeah, it buys you the rest of your life. Like at the end of the day, yeah. you can, all, and that's what's so beautiful about winning a championship, which is why you know players have this dream of winning a championship because, yo, it can excuse you throwing a ball to the other team for the rest of your career. Like in clutch situations, you can always go back to that one year where you were the best in the world. Um, you know, even though your defense dominated and you had a kick returner win MVP, that's either here nor there. Fact of the matter is, you have a chip. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, so that's all interesting, right, so man. It, so I for everybody, terms, I was going to say one thing about RG3 because okay, I know it's going to it's going to come into what we're getting ready to talk about now. Let's talk a little bit of hip hop, and you know we talk about how RG3 runs the Twitter or Instagram and all that, and you know I know that's going to come up in here, man. So it, it's just interesting to see this world we live in in 2015, where when you literally watch Sports Center or the news, people's tweets like make the news. There is like a sep there's no separation between the people and the actual athletes, which is. It's just an interesting, like you know, case study of how things have changed in in the world. No doubt. But um, I just want to tell everybody, you know, if you if you listen every week, then you know that um, B. Austin uh, has been on hiatus for a while because for the last month he's been trekking around the mother continent. He's he's been over in Africa, um, spreading that goodwill and everything, and he he might. In in a few minutes, he's actually on his way back to the states, but I think he's in a layover, like in a Frankfurt airport or something. So just you know, stay tuned if you, if you miss your homie B. Austin. Yeah, <laughs> we might hear from him in a few minutes, but he's been he's been walking around Africa for the past month, and he said cats have been coming up to him asking him like this. I was wondering, did you happen to catch the professional football contest on television last night? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, yeah. since they know he's the sports guy, you know, he's had to answer questions like that from you know a bunch of people in the the past month, and they also come up to him like this because we're big oh over there on the mother continent. Oh my goodness! It is you! I cannot 
believe it. Oh. <laughs> Lee Austin is a worldwide celebrity, yo. He's a worldwide celebrity, so. When I said I hope you got some air fresh, I meant that uh, that, that Frankfurt Airport, man. Like you know, if you anybody's ever been oh, yeah. there before, if you haven't been to airport, Europe. Period. Yo, every that airport smells like <laughs> onions. Yo, all the European Jones, man. As soon as they open the, the door, the jetway, the wind come wafting to you. It's like hoagies and and falafel. Like, <laughs> 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 I mean, but we know, you know. Yo. Shout out to our, our European brethren. They they don't really do the deodorant thing awesome. like we do. So you know, we we're not I trying to insult y'all. We're just telling y'all how it is, man. We're telling y'all how it is. So be Austin, man. If if you if you if you calling in. Give us a holler because we're about to talk about yeah. some of your homies. I think he's Yo, on the line now. Yo, shout out to be Austin while we bring him on. Be you there? Yo. Yo, Yo I, <laughs> what I, I up, Prince you Hakeem? Real quick, brother, cause you, <laughs> what up, though? Up some amazing photos, man. Like, I've been looking at your photos on, like, you know, your IG, your Facebook, or what have you. And, Yo, I've been looking at the photos. background of his photos. But that's enough. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's some, you know, <laughs> women over there have some wagons. But I mean, that's either here nor there. But, you know, not saying that's why you took the particular photo. They just happened to be in the background. But, you know, some background. amazing shots, man. Some amazing shots of Africa, man. So, how, how is your trip? Man, life changing, life altering. I mean, I'm still the same ignorant dude that y'all hear every week on the air. So, ain't nothing going to change. But, man, Africa is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place, man. Beautiful people, great food. Um, a whole bunch of paradoxes that we'll get into later um, as I share my trip with y'all. Um, man, I'm just happy to be back on the air. Y'all heard I am in Frankfurt, uh, Germany, and 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 Under Arms is definitely on a thousand. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, be next week. Don't even give them too much because you know we're in that boring time of the summer where it's yeah, not a lot to yeah. talk about. So me and Jimmy was, you know, thinking about doing yeah. some greatest this and greatest you. that. So next week we can do a whole segment on your trip. <laughs> we can just talk about your trip for like thirty minutes next week. Yeah, but um, yeah, yeah. I guess what's up? What they want. I yeah, I kept telling that. people the whole time, like, yo, if if I wasn't, you know, about doing what I was doing right now with all the stuff that's coming down the pike in like September through November in my life, we would have found a way to get on that trip with y'all because it, it looked like, yeah. it, you know, it definitely oh. looked like it was life altering. Oh, man. I've, I've, I've had a blast. Now I'm back in uh, the usual civilization. Y'all saw I jumped back on social media because you have to actually buy your data connection prepaid and I was scared I was going to run out. Uh, but the last, you know, <laughs> three days of the trip, I had like five gigabytes to burn, so I got the you know so I got the post got it in. And, and yeah, I got yeah. it in. Now I'm in Wi-Fi. I'm back in you know in, in in Germany, and it's pretty much like the U.S. except for the uh, the body hygiene outside of that. <laughs> 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 yeah, we messing up all our our, European listeners, and we do have European listeners, by the way. Yo, well, look, man. We were about to we were about to go off on 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 a little hip hop tangent. I mean, stay on the line with us as long as you can. You know, oh, drop yeah, off whatever you feel I'm, like it. You know, if you want to finish I'm the here. show, it's whatever. But I'm, um, I'm here. I'm here because I know since you since you got you had your gigs burned that you caught up on all the news. First, first of all, you know your man Fifty is under oath telling everybody that his lifestyle was basically a lie, and he's like Martin in the courtroom episode. Like, Judge, I ain't got no ends. So he's trying to get out of this no settlement. Man. I know last time, Jim, when we talked about this amongst ourselves, we didn't really believe, you know, that the bankruptcy had anything to do with 50 being broke. But now that he's saying this stuff under oath, like, are y'all starting to believe him a little bit? Y'all think 50 was I, I never. Think, I think it's a little truth, but it's also a, a lot of lie because I, I paid <laughs> attention to something that he started, like when this whole lawsuit happened with the chick. He started like distancing himself from companies. He was on a couple podcasts and he said like um, when they said something about the money he makes, and he was like, "Well, my companies make money. I don't make money." So, oh, so he's playing that. that game. He's playing a little bit yeah. of that game. But I do, I do think it's a little truth in it too. The fact that I tell people that all the time. Yeah, people are like y'all getting too. that, y'all getting that money. I'm like, well, you know, I don't, I don't, we don't really pay ourselves that much. But <laughs> well, we're, 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 you know, war room you know, sports. It's about, it's, doing about, something. Yeah, it's about building a company, and you know, I guess yeah. he understands how to build a company because you look at like even when Power goes off, it says G Unit Films, and everything he does has like a brand attached to it. So he may pay himself a small salary, but you know, um, but you know, that's just for protection. 
against I'm things like this. <laughs> but I do believe that there's a little bit of truth into it in terms of him talking about the lifestyle because he actually made a point that, you know, once I file bankruptcy and it's out there, I'm a little bit less cool. Um, once right. this once this deposition comes out, I'm a little bit less cool. And there's truth to that. And so he's I, like, you know, I, I got a lot to lose. Y'all think I'm just doing this to protect something, but I actually have stuff to lose because, you know, a lot of people don't really even understand bankruptcy. They assume right. every time somebody files it that they're broke, which is far from the case. As Donald Trump. The wealthiest people I personally know have filed bankruptcy multiple times. I mean, I'm, I'm it's, glad. It's a That's why they stay wealthy because they, they don't give up that money. When times get rough. They just you know, like, I'm glad I was able to join the show at this particular juncture. Uh, go, go ahead, Jimmy. I got a, I I got a say, couple of bars to spit on. All right, I'm going to let you go. One thing I just want to say is I was watching an interview with Damon. And one thing that he said, though, like within hip hop culture, um, is that, you know, acting as if you have money is part of your marketing plan. He said, even when. Right. They were rolling at the top of the at the top of the game with Rockefeller. He said if they had a hundred thousand dollars and looked like they had a million. He said if they had a million, looked like they had ten million. And by the time they got to ten million, he said they had everybody believing they had a hundred million. He was saying that. Um, <laughs> he was saying at the time. He said at the time he was made one of the magazines like Forbes one of them, and they was like he's worth three hundred million. He said he was laughing like where. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the same because you said 50 said that Forbes overestimated his worth by what like 150 million how the hell do you do that he said I'm worth about 4 million <laughs> he, he, um, he, yeah, he, he probably he is trouble, personally he probably is personally um, one of the things that, that you really have to understand about Curtis Jackson since he's playing a white man's game uh, we'll, we'll go by his government Curtis um, he's, he's a very astute and savvy businessman. Um, and he listens to the Jewish gentlemen that are around him and, and he emulates them. Um, I've noticed from a, from a long time ago, um, 50 creates companies for his ventures and he was probably advised not to take, uh, money out. There's a thing called retained earnings. Um, and in some professions, you take money out and you leave no retained earnings. That's not smart. Um, and in, in other companies, you leave the retained earnings. Um, and in and in 50s case, I believe that he leaves a lot of the money in those companies. So when he says, "I'm worth four million dollars as an individual," yeah, he probably is only worth four million because you know his ownership is is in those companies, and that's probably placed into a trust. And when you own a company with a trust, you don't have to reflect it as a part of your personal, your personal net worth. The other thing that happens with Forbes is when you see those lists and they throw these huge numbers around, that's not liquidity. You know, on paper, you would be surprised at the people that are millionaires on paper that can't, you know, may live check to check because liquidity is different than your net worth. Um, yeah. so, you know, I, I, I think even the vitamin water deal got blown out of proportion. He did the vitamin water deal. Everybody thought he made a half, a half a billion. It was actually more like 70, $70 million. And when the tax man came and hit him over the head there, he probably walked away with 35 million liquid there. And he put that probably into another company. This is just speculative, but I've watched the way he moves and he's very corporate. Um, he truly is an admirer of Jay. And that's another conversation to have, but he's removed tattoos from his body. He's had a speech, um, speech training and, and grill education on how to talk. He's gotten his grill. Fix. He wants to transition into that, that whole corporate world. He is the anti Floyd Mayweather. as He likes to call Floyd his little brother. He's not uh -huh. really into that. And if you watch fifties fashion, even his clothing, his clothing is a little bit corny. He's a corny bull. Like he's not into really flashing outside of what it does for his image to keep people, you know, paying for his albums. He's reached a point but, where he's probably not going to be a rapper that much longer. So well, hold up. Yeah. Risk. yeah. Cause I, cause I got two more things I want to, I want y'all to talk about in this before we get back into the, to the sports. Cause we got some basketball stuff to talk about. We got a couple of callers on the line. Um, uh, ghost ghost face killer from Wu Tang. Um, he fired back at Action Bronson for the stuff that he said on Sports Nation with um, Max Kellerman and, and 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 that dude <laughs> and those guys. And also we heard that everybody's newest hero, Drake, 
might not really write his raps. So talk about those two things real quick. What do y'all think about Ghost airing out Action Bronson the way he did? Now, I'll answer this one first because everyone knows I'm a huge Action Bronson fan. Um, I listen to every piece of work that he's put out. I think he's, he's, I also know you to be a huge Ghostface Killer fan. Oh, actually, Ghostface is in my top. Um, he's one of the he's one of the he's one of the twenty six people in my top ten. But um, <laughs> the thing about it is, uh, I think Bronson kind of played himself. He fell he fell for the banana in the tailpipe pause, uh, so to speak, because he was on TV, got excited, said some things. Because up until this point, he's been doing nothing but paying homage to Ghost. Anytime someone brings up the fact that their voices sound similar, all he does is pay homage. Now, the one may say, well, he just gets tired of the question because it gets asked often. But I think he fell into, like, the bright lights of being on ESPN and tried to make a joke. Because anyone who listens to his music, and, you know, if, with, with a true artist, you can get a little bit of their personality by listening to their music. He, he did, and he let, he let Kellerman and them bait him into that joke. Too. Yeah, basically, yeah, that's exactly what happened. Like, he was trying to be he funny. He said. But he told Ghost he was nervous. I was nervous, so I just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the fact of the matter is he fell for, he fell for the banana in the tailpipe, and it got him in trouble. And... I know this sounds crazy because he has a huge fan base. Um, I don't know how you get back to where he was on his way to because, like, you can't – first of all, he did the right thing. He didn't respond back to Ghost because Ghost has put out, a, like, a top five uh, rap diss of all time without even being a song. Um, <laughs> yeah, take TV in that ground. Yeah, you can't respond to that. You, he played it right with that. But at the end of the day, I was part of me feels like, damn, how do you even come back from that? Because that's always yeah. going to be over you. But then it's also it's in 2015, and no one even cares. Within a week or so, people will forget about it. Um, yeah. And you know, then a lot of people who to... might be fans of his, besides you know cats like yourself, might be young dudes. So they don't even know who this ghost face you know, killer guy is. Really, they don't even so. care. They don't even care what's real. They don't care about any <laughs> of that. Um, you know, and and it's funny, like in a certain way. Like, yo, a Ghost has been all over the news because of this. He kind of, like, made Ghost hot a little bit. Ghost got some, some <laughs> national attention because of this. Like, yeah. Ghost was on rotation. Yeah, shout out to Rand Ghost because they're on tour right now. I just caught the, yeah, the Cuban yeah, Links yeah. 20-year anniversary tour two weeks ago. You know, so to, that, to me, that's there. what happened. He was trying. He thought it was trying to be funny, and he fell for it. They baited him into it, and they got what they wanted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the exactly. Day, it did because their name problem. is getting shout, shouted out again, too, because even when Ghost is talking his talk, you know, he made sure he said, you know, to the guys on Sports Nation or whatever. I, I you know, I thought it was funny because Ghost and he he's always funny. I thought he took it a little too far when he was actually threatening the dude with shooters and and stuff like that. It's not that serious. But Yo. when in our private conversation, Jim, you did remind me that Wu Tang don't really be about that battle rap life. Yo, they ain't about um, battle rap life. Like we saw Joe. <laughs> they, ain't about, they ain't about that dip song. Yo, like. Joe Buck made a comment, got a little out of pocket, and he ended up with a black eye. And they made him Yo. apologize on they, camera. Like, well, no, but Joe Button is such a noodle to go oh, on the camera holding the ice to his grill. Like, come on, Yo. Yo. like I say, I'm sorry. Yo. They took <laughs> Yo, Joe Button me. into a room and beat him up, <laughs> and then he apologized <laughs> for running into their fist. I'm sorry for being in the way. I apologize. Like. Yo, you don't want it with Wu Tang. Um, I don't know. I I, I haven't really seen the diss yet. Uh, the response. I saw the big hoopla. I saw you know what Action said. He, you know, I'm also a, a Action Bronson supporter. I can't call myself a fan of anybody that's younger than me. Um, <laughs> but I definitely, uh, I definitely support his music. I'm I'm into his his his, his whole style. What he brings back. And another thing I'm gonna say even about his fan base. His fan base is the type of cat that would be familiar with Ghostface because they're more of an intellectual hip hop crowd, even though they may be young dudes. So I think I think people know what this is. I think they know the old head is 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 using this to to kind of gain some shine. Hopefully this blows over because it's it's silly. Ghost ain't have to threaten that man's life, man. And I'm and I'm a yeah. Wu Tang fanatic, Stanley. I will admit that. Oh, yeah, that. me too. And that's yeah, the thing. Like, that's why, for me, it's weird because everyone came at me like, look at your man. I'm like, because everyone knows I'm an Action Bronson fan. But I also, in my heart, believe that Wu-Tang is for the children. So, you know, um, it was it was just interesting. But Ghost, man, you can't win going against Ghost. Like, Ghost, Ghost is like, in terms of talking trash, just completely talking trash on, like, skits and tracks. Like, he's up there. I mean. I don't want Rocky nobody have the greatest sounding like me on no album. 
on no album. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna yo, just, I'm gonna end, I'm gonna end it. Smash, yo, I'm gonna end it like this. A lot of these rap dudes in, in today's hip hop arena, if you want to call it, end it with a big red cherry on top. Yo, with a big red cherry. These dudes, this is not who they are. This is a persona. Wu Tang, that's <laughs> them that they recorded and showed you. Like they really believe and live by a lot of the stuff that they talk. So you don't want no problems with that. All right, so what y'all no. think about Drake, man? Meek Mill said Drake don't be writing his rhymes, man. And Yo, Drake on top of the game right now, man. What's up I, with that? I, I believe two things. I believe that Drake probably did have some ghostwriting help, but at the end of the day, I think that Drake lyrically, his content is 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 what leaves a lot to be desired, but lyrically Yo, Meek Mill don't want no problems with Drake, with Aubrey, man. But, <laughs> now, it's funny you say that, because I had a Aubrey, lot of thoughts about this. I, I, I don't understand this. This why actually, people actually, are into Meek Mill's music, but that's just this me. Actually connects, this actually connects to sports, because the first thing I thought was, and by the way, Meek's new, I'm not going to lie, Meek got about three or four songs of new album that I actually do like, but I'm not really a huge Meek Mill fan. Why? I support him because I, I, I support, why, why, why do I like him? <laughs> Yes. No, he has, he has a couple of tracks that I actually think are good. I mean, but that's yeah, like I four out of like out. 14. That's like not a good percentage. My point is this. Um, I support him strictly because he's from the crib, and I actually have ESP. seen him give back. He actually has give back, like given back. I've seen him, you know, giving out sneakers to an entire school. Like, I've seen him actually literally give back. So I respect him for that, even though in his music he's talking a bunch of stuff that, you know, but that's neither <laughs> here nor there. But my point is this, though. This is one of those things where he got emotional, got on Twitter and talked this trash. And I was like, I, I was like, yo, what happened? In, like, if you got a problem with an MC, you put it on wax and you talk filthy. Is he you know Drake, I mean? come back Drake openly whatever. likes Nikki? Is that is it got something to do with that? I mean, it may have something to do with the yeah. Nikki, but no, but the whole thing to me is this is just a this is just like, you know, a microcosm of, of where we are. MCs don't even diss each other. They go to Twitter. They go to Twitter, like which which hip hop suffers <laughs> because we yeah, don't get to see suffers, two like, cats oh, battling they, it out. Have immediate access to their fans. They don't even take the time. Before you couldn't talk to all your fans unless you went and recorded, you know, and then you you put the music out and your fans hear what you have to say to get whatever off your chest. Now you take 140 characters and then you just you know he went on a tirade though. You say what's on your chest when you're pissed. It's like yo, and you see athletes do it. Athletes have a problem with something, they go right to Twitter. And I was like, man, I'm, I'm just not used to that. But at the end of the day, man, it's one of them things that me and B often go back and forth with all the time where we don't have to agree with something, but we also understand that this is just what it is in 2015. I, I, totally, 2015, I totally agree with everything Jimmy just said, and that's the reason that the game is gay and hip-hop is, is on life yo. support and will be dead by tomorrow. But me, yo, yo but the only not, reason a guy like me – the only reason a guy like me even feels comfortable in this position today is because he knows he don't have to go into the booth. Like, he had that battle a little while ago, if you want to even call it a battle with Cassidy. And Cassidy ate his lunch, but nobody even cared. They didn't care about the ball. Because he's more popular than Cassidy. Because he's yeah, more because popular. Yeah, he got 4 million yeah. followers and Cassidy got 100,000. Didn't he, didn't he used to battle rap, though? I mean, yeah, Yo, but he was never, he never made a name in that way. Dirty, little he, dirty he, cat from North Philly that really was couldn't inspired. rap. Yeah. And every time I hear like, him, he's kind of like on his scream chanty type, young. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, yeah. Bull sound funny, like he's yelling. Somebody, Bull, somebody said Bull sound like he's yelling at a McDonald's drive through trying to order from the back seat. <laughs> Yo, the funniest thing I saw was somebody like write out his lyrics and was trying to say that, okay, well, he was sending subliminals in this song. They wrote his lyrics out and they wrote the whole thing in caps. Somebody said, why are you writing in caps? They was like, because that's how he raps. He but, listen, though, um, but, but the thing about it is, like, you're right. They don't have to go to the booth. Like, it's like the whole thing with Joe Button. Joe Button said something slick. Instead of him getting in the booth, my man just went to Twitter. But you, like I said, this is this ties into sports. This is just what it is. And a lot of times, guys, when you get emotional, they say things without thinking about what they're saying. Um, I'm just glad that we didn't have Twitter and we're that age because I don't know if I would have fell victim to it as well. I would like to think I wouldn't have, but we're not growing up with Twitter. Like Twitter came around later, but some people are growing up with it, and this is right. their form of like communication and and the way you know they they talk to each other. So. I'm still I mean, different, though. I mean, here's the thing, though. We're old school. Like, I, like, if I got something to say, I don't 
run to Twitter. Like I, I, I still call dudes like. Tell yeah, them yeah, yeah. Up. But the thing is, though, <laughs> we didn't grow up with it. They're growing up with it. Is there like people don't even talk on the phone That's anymore? What they're so, used to, right? You know what I mean? So, but the thing about it is, uh, one thing we didn't even bring up is the fact that yo, Drake has been stealing for a long time. There's so many people that accuse him of stealing <laughs> their stuff, but a lot of times mm. he's blown away because there's somebody that no one knows. And they be like, oh, you just hating. But now I, I heard because we I heard also Sway say Jimmy. Uh, huh? No, I was just saying, I heard Sway say that Meek might have put all this stuff out there because he going for the crown. But I was like, what claim would Meek Mill have to any crown? Like, No, man. I mean, I don't no, know. They don't Kendrick rap well is. enough to go for the crown. Like, But it's a different time, so I may be. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe yeah, a lot of people thing, tell though. me what's, he has a speak uh, to the crown. B. Austin's, B. Austin's favorite line from Fabulous, like, yo, money ain't the root of all evil attention is. Being mm-hmm. the king now ain't about how nice you are. It's about how popular you are. How popular you are. I, <laughs> yeah, so it's like, oh, I'm the king of but rap. But he ain't and I more popular rap. than Aubrey, though. No, but not that's why he, that's why he's trying to crap on his brain. Bring him down a peg. Pop, oh yeah, he's trying to bring him down a peg. But my thing is, right. the boy that he put out there, and he wrote dude's name on his tweet. He said, "Yo, Quentin Miller writes his rap. Quentin Miller, whatever his name is." And when people looked up Quentin Miller, like Quentin Miller had a song that he put out like four years ago, and Drake took it, it word like for Drake. word. Yo, Dude. took it word for word. Not, not even sounding like him, the same flow. Like, yo, Drake has the words in his song. Like, But my <laughs> thing is, if I'm dude, I'm pissed because you're messing up his money. Dude allegedly right. is on the payroll, they say, for like five grand a month, and he gets all his back end bread. So dude had a yeah. nice little gig. <laughs> so me messing everybody <laughs> money up. Yeah, all right, so nice let's let's get gig. back in the in the, some sports. We're going to talk about um, a few things in basketball to close the show, but we got some calls on the yeah. line, man. We got to get to those hey, Scott, lines. Real quick, to end, that whole, to end that whole thing off with the hip-hop and Twitter and all that, yo, uh-huh. RG3's a sucker. That's the, the gist of all that is RG3 is a sucker. <laughs> the whole gist. <laughs> I agree. All right, well, let's go to uh, Tobias uh, calling from out in Zona. Roll damn hey. tide, though. What's up, Tobias? Roll Tide, man. About a month left till we beat the crap out of Wisconsin. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Uh, all I know is that glad for y'all to have fun in Africa. He got me thinking that he was Nas from Belly talking about, I'm going to Africa, bud. I'm going to Africa. I got shot. It's good. Worst acting ever, yo. Ever. Man. But y'all talk NFL storyline. I'm going complete Homer here. Y'all know I'm a Bucks fan. I just want to see how Jameis Winston does. Will he be the first franchise quarter? End up being the first franchise quarterback in the history of the franchise. No, and let me well, step on the hot seat. You gonna bring Jameis? That, up. Damn, you that, that's crazy that you say that because I think back and that's home. true. Y'all never, never really had a franchise quarterback. Stop yep. playing penis picks to Dre. Steve yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey Jameis, that's quarterback in the booty too. Yeah, and Lovey Smith on the hot seat. They think again this year he's gone. I don't care if he's black. He's a good man, but who cares? It's all about results right now. But I've always said Lovey Smith was an overrated coach, but, you know, I, I always got the treatment for that. How are you going to say that about the brother? Because the brother stink. I mean, that's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> no benefit of the doubt. Uh, yeah, because, uh-huh. because I saw those rankings. They got him dead last. Which I'm not mad about because he's a rookie. <laughs> My thing is, he's talking about RG3. This dude's been sister since he first got the league, but what do you expect from a grown man who mama still do bring his plats every day before game time? You yeah, know? He like, he like he like 27 or 29 in Jaws' yeah. ranking, and he was the rookie of the year, so he has no excuse. Jameis has an excuse. I haven't stepped foot on the field yet, so I shouldn't be ranked. But <laughs> He shouldn't be. He shouldn't RG3 be. That's why I'm not mad about it. An excuse whatsoever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's so sensitive, like, dude, you've been hurt and you've been dog crap since when you was in there. And it was like, dude, just shut up and play. Nobody, because let's be honest, you're a quarterback. You're kind of like a CEO of a company. You're going to take shots from everywhere. Everybody's not going to like you. That's what happens when you're there. It's time to be a man and say, hey, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. But I hate to tell Jimmy this. Peyton Manning need, need to be like old yellow. Take him out in the back and put the slug in him. It's over. It's <laughs> over, man. <laughs> Listen, I'm, not, yo, I'm not even going to argue with you. I'm not saying it's over, but I know that like no one has beaten Father Time, man. So it's like he played at a high level the last couple of years, although towards the end of the season and into the playoffs it didn't look that great. I'm hoping, like, you know, maybe he, was, he wasn't he was healthy and he's getting healthier. But 
I don't want to see that fall off season, man. I just don't want to see it. Like every quarterback. You know what you need, Jim? You need Peyton Manning to have a slow start. His yeah. MO is fast starts. Like he'll he'll start out the season crazy. But I'm I'm gonna yeah. tell you I'm gonna tell you what's interesting. They're talking about having more of a running game now that we have a running back. So we're talking yeah. about having more of a running game. But I don't know how that works because Peyton is like such a rhythm guy. Part of the reason. Remember, we thought last running season running. how yeah. I kept saying that I think they were <laughs> testing out the running game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do that. Yeah. So, you know, so the thing is, I'm not going to sit here and argue with you about it, Tobias, you know, but I, I still would rather have Peyton right now than your quarterback. I, mean, I don't care what you're doing. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, I don't know that. At least my, hey, at least Mark could throw a 10 yards about a wobble like a duck. Uh, you know, <laughs> but, but you know what, though? No, I'll say this, though. Two quick things. First, smart move by Adam Silver making Saturday night NBA games. Smart move. Take advantage of that day. Uh, especially yeah. college football will be done. No NFL around that time. Take advantage of it. You know, and, uh, and with college football, you hear they talking about they may expand the playoffs to 18. I'm like, good. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'm with it. I like it. Because, let's be honest here. If you're going to reward four conference champions and you got five power conferences, what sense that makes? And let's be honest here. You may have a team who may have a tough schedule this year, like my Alabama here, got one of the toughest schedules, who may not make it this year, but it doesn't mean they stink. And so I don't want them just rewarded undefeated because you won the ACC like Florida State has. And then you get whooped when you play against a real team. You know, it's just, I I think it'll be good. All right, cool. Well, you know, as usual, Tobias, thanks for your call, man. We'll talk to you next week. When those training camps get underway, we'll see what famous Jameis is out there doing at the start of camp. Just, hey, just, hey, don't worry. Keep, be off hey, out of his room, man. Hey, hey, be, hey, be off Okay. Hey, I tell be off this. Hey, when you think your old lady, go ahead and say, she's your queen to be. <laughs> 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 no. Yeah, I'm taking it easy, man. All right. All right. <laughs> oh, somebody's crazy. All right. So, um, I think we got Rob from Cali back on the line. Uh, he had to call back in. I think he must have eluded the cops. Rob, what's going on, bro? <laughs> Did you make you, you, you got out of there? <laughs> uh oh, maybe he didn't. Uh oh, Rob. Uh oh, Rob. Oh man, Rob, don't tell me you're right, going to a hashtag, man. Wait, wait, hello. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. All right, about to say. Nah, man. nah, I, I was clicking off the switchboard as soon as he said hello. Oh, all right, so hey, come on, Rob. We got the homie Naeem. Naeem ain't called in a while. What's going on, now? What's going on, brothers? What's going on? Oh, man. Uh, what's going on? Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, man. I don't I know, know where to start. You talk man. about that, that Jerry Rice thing. I know you want to Yeah, I want to talk about the Jerry Rice. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I just don't understand the, um, how can I use the right word on air? The foolery of some men. I'm like, um, <laughs> um, that right there. That right there, and I'm not surprised about somebody ghost writing for Drake because Jay Z stole a song before everybody forget. You know, he paid the people fifty thousand from the brother of Philly that he stole the song from. That goes on in the industry. That's a, it's a um, story, man. I got, I got huh? you, I said, and yeah, um, that, but you're right. yeah, 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 and um. The incident with the young lady getting pulled over, I was talking to an old-timer earlier this week, and they told me, um, I ain't growing up in their day, they were 70, they're 75. And my father told me, this guy rest his soul, you know, you don't get cops, you know, lit. And he said, y'all young black souls think y'all made it now because y'all party and sit down with them. Y'all ain't make it. You know, that's what my father used to tell me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and it's just... um. Then talking about the Lakers, Jimmy, I don't know. I'm ready for COVID to go, man. Let's hope we get some salary cap money. I've been, listen, I've been telling you that for two years, man. Like, I, I, I love being, man. I appreciate everything being done, man. But at some point, but, uh, I guess it's time to go. You got to take him off back and shoot him dead, man. Boy, yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's time for Kobe to go. Time to go. Because nobody don't want to play with him. <laughs> Kobe's going to be running around like, yo, man, they try to assassinate me, man. Yeah. They try to assassinate me. <laughs> you remember that little kid who take the ball by your building? The little kid who take the ball in the house, you know what I mean? You can't, you know, you can't play with my boss Kobe right now, so. Yeah. And that's about it, man. That's about it. You know, not much. I'm, 
You know, we always enjoy the call. Always enjoy hearing from you, good brother. We only got a few yeah. minutes left anyway, so we're going to get to That's this. That's all I'm talking yeah. But um, these last Meek, couple. We all know yeah. me can't do nothing with Drake, man. Come on. You know. <laughs> <laughs> we all be Drake, smoking crazy. Put like this, Naeem. Drake and his writer would kill me. <laughs> I mean, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I support, no, Meek like, can't you even know, deal with Drake's writer. He can't no, deal like, with like his writer. Like Someone told me this, though, and I thought this was hilarious. They were like, yo, the world is like, it's crazy right now. It's 2015. Yo, we're saying basically that an actor from Canada can literally <laughs> beat like a black, a black rapper from North Philly. What's going well, on, bro? Well, lyrically, you know, lyrically, Meek is not all that good, brother. Let's keep it real. He has a good, no, no, he has no, a no, real no. story. He has a real yeah, story. His, his lyrics kind of meek. Me credit for it, it's <laughs> lower than meek. Meek has an ear for beats. Like, a lot of rappers don't get credit. Like, he has a great ear for beats. Like, his whole camp is going to pick yeah. great beats. You know what I mean? And make great, great radio songs. Great meek, great exactly. radio songs, too. Exactly. So. Great radio like songs. Right. But then yeah, the I mean, but like, yo, coming from North Philly. Actor from Canada, we're saying that he can, like, you know, lyrics. And he was one of the Grazy, too. The Degrassi. He's on the Degrassi. What's that show? Degrassi, Degrassi. yeah. He's on that in the he wheelchair. Used, he, used yeah. be, he used to be on there. But, anyway, but he started from the not bottom. I watched it. Not that I didn't watch <laughs> yeah. it. But, I mean, you know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for the call, Naeem. All right. Let's do yourself. All right. All right. All right. We're going to try Rob one more time. Rob, we got to make this. We got to make this short, man, because we got a, a couple of basketball things. I want to get to 100 miles and running on this easy eat, John. <laughs> Rob, you there, man? You there? Yeah, man. I swear. Man. Right. I think the Fed is tapping my phone. Man. I got to start chomping on the internet, dude. No, man. They listening. They got you out there. All right. What's up, man? Because we got to make um, this quick um, now because we, we out of time all right. almost. All right. All right. Two, two big things. One, um, uh, basketball, the summer league was good, you know, not great. Really not happy with uh, D'Angelo Russell's play. Everybody said he's a future, but this dude can't turn over the damn ball too much. Okafor, I think they they're, better, they're, they're better at all the rookies, obviously. And, I mean, he's just, I mean, <laughs> it, it'll be a struggle when he, it'll be a struggle at first, but I think he's going to progress on. I'm still pissed that Philly got him, you know, but they ain't going to do nothing anyway. He'll, eventually, he'll come to LA when he's going to be a free agent, you know, so he'll get a Damn! But, um, also, also, <laughs> for for all Philly fans, I need that. You forget, you don't got Jim Buss. I'm going to ask, I'm a, I'm a ask a, a Jim, a Jim Buss has only been in charge for five years. Y'all managed him a bit worse since Iverson, you know. But, you know, one man. It's not actually same. true. Anyways. The um, new Sixers management been there less time than Jim Buss. Try again. Okay. 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 And it, it, anyways, I was I was wondering. Okay, same question, but different scenario. I want I want um Jimmy to answer this about this player. I'm gonna answer the day, but I want Jimmy to answer. Um, if the Eagles did that trade with trade for a quarterback, what happens if if instead of Sam Bradford, cause I see a con- contract situation with another dude. What happens if it was still the Rivers? How would you feel about that? If they made the trade for Philip Rivers, yeah. I mean, Bradford. I don't have a problem with the Bradford trade, to be honest with you. Like, I'm, my thing is, <clears throat> I understand what Chip Kelly was doing. Whether it works or not, I have no clue. But I do understand his moves. That's the thing. Like, people criticize all the moves he's made. I understand them. So I'm not one of these guys that had a problem with him even with the Bradford trade. And I'm not a huge Bradford fan. To me, he's checked down Charlie. But I don't have a problem with that move. So Phillip Rivers, I mean, I wouldn't have a problem either way. I understand what he's trying to do. I understand what he's trying to build. Like, he put all the pressure on himself. If it doesn't work, there's no one to blame but Chip. But I get it. You see what I'm saying? I get the big picture. You know what I mean? So I'm not one of these guys that has a problem with uh, Sam Bradford. So I, I don't need him to replace him with Phillip Rivers. I understand what you're, the question you're trying to ask, but I don't have a problem with the trade anyway. I, I, well, because they ain't your team and you got a quarterback. But... <laughs> No, I mean, it's true. I mean, that's that's part of it, but also just being objective, looking at the, the big picture. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, we're trying to win a championship. So you want to keep certain guys and just uh, compete and barely make the playoffs or sneak into the playoffs, that's one thing. But sometimes you got to, like, shoot for the fences, man. Like, you got to try different things because you're trying to win a championship. You're not just trying to be competitive. What are you trying to do I'm, here? I'm, I mean, can you name me a team in the offseason 
all in the off season, in two off seasons, I let go of six pro balls and still won a championship. I mean, probably not. I can't off the top of my head. No, I mean, I probably could look it up and try to figure that out. But off the top of my head, no. But so, would you rather him have stayed pat with those Pro Bowlers and not win anything? Because the team. Well, he's not. Well, he's, he's he's not. He's not a. He's not a. He's not even. He's not a great. He's a good coach or offensive of interviewer. He's not a great coach. He's not Jimmy Johnson. He so Jimmy Johnson's a great coach. With, yeah, is Jimmy, Johnson a great co- is Jimmy Johnson a great coach or Jimmy Johnson is a great personnel guy? Which one was it? That's the one thing you got to ask yourself. Second thing you got to ask yourself: you're, you're you're ready to make a determination on how great of a coach he is. Let him. Let's see what happens. He's never I'm had the you know had a chance to pick his own groceries. Like stop jumping the gun. I'm not saying he's a great coach, but I'm not ready to call him a terrible coach either. Andy Reid didn't win you anything. So what are you trying to do? Wait, here? Wait, 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 wait. Are you just trying to compete, or are you trying to go for it? Because if you go for it, risk equals reward. He could fall flat on his face and fail. But the fact of the matter is he's trying something different because you don't want to just sit there with those guys who continuously make the Pro Bowl and you're not winning anything. So you should be appreciative that you have a coach that's like swinging for the fences, so to speak. Like he's trying to win. No, no I mean, listen, listen, listen. I, as much as I criticize Andy Reid for not giving McNabb help and by the way, free McNabb, it was not his fault. Me and McNabb were a drinking contest and he won, you know, all, every decision that he would make, you know. <laughs> So listen, listen. As I uh, hate you, know, and you can criticize Andy. One thing about Andy Reid, you can never say that players do not respect him. Do not love him. Who cares? He didn't, him. And he didn't respect his and, I, and, and that's no shade. That's no shade. He's, he's a good coach. But what I'm saying is, do you want a guy that's going to go for it, or you want a guy that's just going to compete every year? What do you want as a fan? Like as, my, as, sometimes. As, as a fan, sometimes you want a guy that's going to be out there reckless. It's sort of like playing poker. You have some guys that play, you know, very conservative, and, you know, they don't win anything. They, they're good poker players. And you have some guys that are just reckless and go for it, and they may lose big, but there's a chance, and sometimes they do, they win big. So the thing I, the thing I give him credit for is, is kind of swinging for the – he may fail. Who knows? But – I'm not with this whole thing, and I've said this before even as a Lakers fan. I'm not with this whole thing of just trying to compete. I don't want to be the Utah Jazz where we compete every year and never win anything. So you want to give credit to these six pro bowlers and Andy Reid. Yo, they haven't won a chip. What do you want to do? He had the pieces. He, had, he was in the best situation as anybody could be in two years ago. He had, all he had to do was just, was just coach. All he had to do was what? Coach. Come on, That's man. Get out of coach. here, man. Like, Leave the player true. personnel with Howie Rosen. No, man. No. He no, he wanted to mean. take all, all this risk. He did it. Let the man let the man cook. Let him cook. You want to judge his it, food and he ain't even bring it out to you yet. You know what? You know what? You all right. I'll let I'll let I'll you know what? You're right. I'll let He may fail, I'll, but let I'll him see fail what first before you judge him. That's all I'm saying. I'll 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 see what happens. But all this I mean, the Sean McCoy thing. I mean, and the oh, thing. Let that people, go, man. He, oh, he's not a. Let no, it go. I'm, let it go. Oh, let it go. It's over. No, no but, but, but you're, miss, you're missing the big picture. You're missing the big picture. We could have got Macklin with the Sean McCoy back. When, 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 when Macklin showed what happened with Sean McCoy, that's why he left. Who cares? Because remember, they, they had Macklin and Sean McCoy for years together. What did that get him? Yo, stop falling in love with these guys, man. This is a, this is a this is a business. You got to move on sometimes, man. Like, who cares? They had Macklin and McCoy. They yeah. got them how many championships? Got them how many playoff wins? How many playoff wins? <laughs> to get championships? Playoff? No. Playoff wins, man. Rob, man, let the coach swing for the. If he fails, let him fail. But let him try, man. You want to judge his food without even letting him finish cooking, man? Anyway, we got to get off the air, man. We ran out of time, let that man. Let him cook. Let him cook. <laughs> All Yo, right, beer drinking week? contest, dog. Beer drinking contest. Uh, Allow me laughing, trust me. All right, man, we can <laughs> argue next week, Rob. We got to get out of here. Peace, salute, man. All right, look, real quick, we just want to give a shout-out to, to Becky Hammond. She was the head coach of the Spurs Summer League team. They won a uh, Summer League championship. That's never a big deal. I will never even know who wins the Summer League championship. But, of course, you know, they got a female coach, so – yeah. It's definitely a thing, and it's bringing up a conversation that we'll probably have next week about the future of lady coaches in the NBA. So, by the way, I just want to before we get out of here, everybody know that Jimmy supports all Beckys. 
Anyway, um, <laughs> thanks for joining us again in the War Room, good people. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, Facebook, Twitter, all the calls that chimed in, everybody um, everywhere who sent us a little message during the show, special thanks. And also, shout out to B. Austin and Hoagie Land. Yeah, yo, shout out to B. Austin for having the, the gall to call in in the middle of all that hoagie. Um, special <laughs> thanks to Fred Purdue for joining us to talk Miami Hurricanes football. Uh, tune in next week, same time, same place, live right here or on demand on the WRS Podcast Network. You know, we always had the great sports talk. NFL training camp begins, and, you know, we'll, we'll talk about more from around the world of sports. There's a lot we didn't get to. We'll get to next week. So until then, enjoy your week. We'll see you right back here next time. Catch all of our conversations, Facebook, Twitter, at War Room Sports, our blogs, webcasts, podcasts, everything, warroomsports.com. Until next time, everybody, don't accept mediocrity. Be steadfast in that war against ignorance, and we'll see you chumps on top. Chumps on top. www.warroomsports.com What? Ain't no more to it.